Let me grab that from you. I'm just gonna get some copies of this. Yeah. No, I'll get it because it's later in the meeting. Okay. I probably won't even be yeah, there. yeah. Aren't they sitting? Hmm? Okay. Let's go. I thought there was some. Welcome, boxes. everybody. We've had a busy couple of days, so we're just trying to get our act together up here, yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is not easy. <laughs> so happy to see some welcome faces in the uh, audience today. Uh, we are here for our Tuesday, March 22nd City Commission work session, and we will call this meeting to order. Nikki is on her way. She'll be here in a few minutes. So if we could all please rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> all right. So we have one of our favorites the National Tartan Day Proclamation, which is April 6th, and I will uh, turn that over to Commissioner Gow. Uh, thank you, Mayor, very much. It is. It's everybody's favorite time of year. Uh, and Alan, thank you very much for, for joining us this morning. Really, really do appreciate it, so My thank pleasure. you. Uh, we have National Tartan Day coming up, and we have our proclamation to acknowledge it. So if I could read that. Uh, National Tartan Day. Whereas National Tartan Day was declared by U.S. Senate Resolution 144 to honor the role that Scottish Americans played in the founding of our nation. America's ties to Scotland are great. Almost half of the signers of the American Declaration of Independence, which was passed on Scotland's 1320 Declaration of Aberth, and 34 of the 45 U.S. presidents have been Scottish have been of Scottish descendant. And whereas Florida has a rich history of Scottish influence as reflected in its culture and in the names of many of its counties, towns, and cities, including Dunedin, which was founded by two Scotsmen, J.O. Douglas and James Somerville. And whereas Florida was the home of some famous Scotch descendant residents, such as Thomas Ed Edison, Ernest Hemingway, Henry Flagler, Andrew Carnegie, and Seminole Indian Chief Osceola. And whereas we celebrate the spirit and character of Scottish Americans and recognize their contributions to our culture and the way of life and strive to promote Scottish traditions internationally through sister city relationships with Stirling, Scotland. And whereas Dunedin encourages its youth to embrace Scottish traditions through the art of Highland dance and the music of pipes and drums in their middle and high school pipe bands. And whereas no fewer than 10 Highland Games and Celtic festivals are held each year throughout the state, including Dunedin, where people from all over the world attend. Whereas we commend the organizations in Dunedin who honor Scottish heritage traditions and cultures such as Scottish American Society, Scottish American Military Society, the Dunedin Scottish Arts Foundation, and the New World Celts. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Gow, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the mayor of the city of Dunedin, and on behalf of the entire city commission, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, April 6, 2022, as National Tartan Day in Dunedin, and urge our citizens to observe this holiday by celebrating the continued friendship between the people of Scotland and the United States, and recognize the contributions of Scottish Americans to our nation, the state of Florida, and the city of Dunedin. Thank you, Commissioner, Mayor, Vice Mayor, uh, Commissioners and City Staff. It is a privilege to stand here again in front of you to accept the declaration or the proclamation of the uh, recognition of Tartan Week. Um, Tartan Week has a, a, an even more significance in our, um, in our culture this year. Um, the Declaration of Verbroth, which was created in 1320, separated church and state but more importantly than that, gave the nation recognition and the authority to determine their own destiny. 
The Declaration of Arbroath itself was a document that formed the basis of the Declaration of Independence in the United States over 200 years ago. Why is it significant today? Well, if you think what's happening in Ukraine, that's really all they're looking for. They're looking for the right to determine their own destiny. And that's a fight that the Americans went through 200 years, 200 plus years ago. And it's a fight that the Scots went through many centuries before that. So it's really appropriate that we remember Tartan Week this week. But to be a little bit more lighthearted about it, we've got a lot of stuff going on at the Scottish American Society. As you mentioned, we have a, there are a number of students that are perpetuating the Scottish culture and arts within the city. And today we've got of about 120 students that are participating in programmes um, from uh, musical theatre and drama to bagpipes, drumming, and uh, Highland dance and Scottish country dance. So for Tartan Week this year, uh, we're going to have a Tartan Day show or a Tartan Week showcase on the Friday night where all that talent will be brought together and they're going to create a variety show which um, will, I'm sure will be as good as the one we had last year. And then on the, the Saturday night, the 9th of April, we will have um, our whiskey tasting, our traditional whiskey tasting. It'll all be scotches this time. Um, there will be no uh, usurpers coming in from Ireland or anywhere else around the world. <laughs> um, not this time. Um, it'll only be scotches. And they are going to be presented by a guy called Bill Mullen, who's actually a singer-songwriter that comes, is coming in from Dundee, Scotland. So we're going to keep that link. Before that, though, this Sunday we've got a tartan sale going on. We're going to be selling off all the tartan artefacts that have been donated to the organisation so that we can basically clear our, uh, clear our closets and uh, make room for more stuff. And then towards the end of April, um, we've already raised as an organisation $1,000 to be able to give to the Ukrainian uh, Relief Fund. And our goal is to try and raise about another 4000 and make it 5000 and we're going to do that by holding a concert on April. We think it's going to be April the 30th. The location's still to be determined. So um, we would love to see you all there supporting it. So with my friends Bob and Colin here today to support us, thank you very much again for accepting or proclaiming Tartan Week as important to Dunedin as it is to the people of the United States, the people of Scotland, and the people of Ukraine. Thank you so much indeed. So I, I did want to say one quick thing. Bob, don't go anywhere. Bob, <laughs> come on down. Yeah. And Colin, come on down. Alan, you can come back too. Um, I just wanted to take the time to introduce, for those who don't know, we, we have a lot of famous people that live in Florida, and I think these are three of them. Alan McHale, of course, from the Scottish American Society, and we have Colin O'Brien, who is kind of our liaison guru to everything Sterling Scotland, our sister city. We, um, we have a visitor from Sterling coming in for our Highland Games. Um, and we're so proud to have that relationship with you. And then, of course, Bob Pearson, our connection to the New World Celts, which started right here in Dunedin. So these are our three famous Scottish <laughs> residents of Dunedin. And again, I'm so sorry I missed your whiskey tasting. I kept thinking it was next weekend. I'm so sorry. It was, right. it was delicious. Okay, well, I'll be there. Somebody will hijack me and make sure I get there. Right. Yeah, we, we will be there. Did you end up going? <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. You got a smile. Smile. Oh, yeah, oh, share that picture with me, will you? Just oh, remember, pretty. you're only a mile away from a whiskey tasting at any time. <laughs> I know, I know. You do them a lot. You do. I can't come to all of his. I'd be, I, I would be pickled if I went to all of his. I was going to say, we're a mile away from a bathroom, too. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen, for keeping up our Scottish traditions. You really help foster that. We really appreciate all the scholarships and everything. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Mayor, for doing that. Thank you. Okay. Now we have our other favorite thing, which is uh, the welcome back proclamation to our Toronto Blue Jays. Um, and I will turn that over to our liaison, Commissioner Frady. All right. Come on down, Shelby. Shelby Nelson. So I do want to say, like, I can't believe when I arrived, and I'm like, 
I did not wear my blue jay shirt today. <laughs> I have two jerseys. I wore blue, but I just not wrote it down. Blue I have two jerseys, two golf shirts, five t-shirts of blue jays, a jacket and a sweatshirt, and I'm in a leopard shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know. That, that wasn't the one I trained. noticed today. I noticed another commissioner <laughs> shirt. <Is it> John? <laughs> John? Yeah, that one. <laughs> it's tartan. It is. It's for the tartan. But John's got the blue jays. He's blue, got sorry. blue. It's all good, and she's got a blue. So that's yep. Good. Anyway. Um, Anyway, we're excited. Obviously, we were all at the opening day, uh, except for Jeff, what who a had his daughter's day. birthday, which is... I did. Yeah, um, so you, you got to do that. Priorities. Stuff, so. Priorities. Sorry. That's but, uh, family is priority, that's for right. sure. So, welcome back, Toronto Blue Jays. Whereas the Toronto Blue Jays played their first game at Grant Field in 1977, beating the New York Mets 3-1, to and Dunedin has proudly been their spring training and minor league home ever since. And whereas Toronto is the only major league franchise to have only one spring training home, and this 46-year partnership and friendship has contributed to the economic well-being of Dunedin, the entertainment of our residents, the athletic development of our children, and the overall quality of our, our city, which I want to say, doing great stuff with the Dunedin High School team now, so really appreciate that, and I know they do. Whereas generations of Canadians have made Dunedin their home, away from home, and many visitors have embraced spring training, and whereas the annual spring training event has greatly contributed to Dunedin's and Pinellas County's economies, with fans visiting our shops and restaurants. And whereas, or whereas under owner Rogers Communication, Mark Shapiro, President and Director of Florida Operations and General Manager Shelby Nelson, we hope this trend will continue as Major League Baseball is very important to the state of Florida, Pinellas County, and Dunedin. Now, therefore, I'm Maureen Mo Franey by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Mayor of the City of Dunedin, Florida, and on behalf of the entire City Commission, do hereby welcome back the Toronto Blue Jays to spring training in Dunedin and encourage all citizens of Dunedin to catch the Blue Jays' fever and cheer Yankees today, right? Yes. Oh we said cheer and the Yankees, okay. so let's not do those two things together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and cheer at our home team as they be – oh, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> no, I would never do that. God bless all the Yankees fans, but no. <laughs> I'm for the Blue Jays. As they begin their journey toward another championship season. So, and, and, and I do think we're going to the World Series, the Blue Jays. So I'm excited about that. So and if that happens, you better make sure that some Dunedin people get to go. That's yes, I, I'll, yes I, I plan to be there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to make some comments. That would be awesome. Thank you, Commission. Um, you know, I, I think back of... My first year here, um, which was 14 years ago, this is my uh, 14th spring training with the club uh, in Dunedin. Uh, I remember how uh, intimidated and nervous and scared I was to, to meet with the commission then. Um, as someone new, learning the city, feel a lot more comfortable now. Uh, I can re I, I refer to all of you as friends and, and colleagues and, and uh, you know, uh, definitely a partnership that we have created over the years and will continue to create or continue to have as as we continue to grow um, our facility is is unbelievable both of our facilities um, the amount of people that i've taken on a tour for both the td ballpark and our player development complex and people trying to be as good uh, as what we have here in Dunedin is just, it, it's amazing to see. It's amazing to see the transformation over the last 14 years that I've been a part of and I've gotten to witness um, both uh, from our facilities and our partnership uh, with the city has been amazing. Uh, so I want to thank everybody here and everyone that's helped uh, along the way. Uh, and, and because I don't see him here, I also want to recognize Jorge um, there. I think Vince is also behind me, uh, partners of ours. And I saw that Doug is back on, uh, back on the team. So uh, good to have him. I got my first email from him in a long time um, yesterday. So that was, uh, I wasn't quite ready for it, um, but uh, that was exciting to see see. Um, but uh, talking about partnership, uh, it's been great working with Dunedin High School this year. The new coach has been spectacular. I think we've had a, a great relationship so far. So good that when we had a game two weeks ago, they kept waiting for me to cancel the game because they're not used to pulling tarp and getting ready. And it was a rain day and we were able to get that game in. So we were pretty excited uh, to be able to do so. I think we still have about seven more games uh, with them. And they've been uh, helpful because this is going to be a busy couple of weeks. Um, uh, we've had to push back spring training, um, so it's not not ideal where we normally start, uh, and we've extended it a little bit further this year, so we'll finish in the beginning of April, but we're just so happy to be able to have at least nine games here this year in Dunedin. Yesterday's, or 
Sunday's game was was great. Uh, I appreciate yeah. everyone being there. Uh, we had the chamber there too. We had a welcome back event for the chamber uh, and uh, a lot of their members. So that was fun to see them all there enjoying the game. Um, and then last year, uh, regular season baseball. Who imagined that the small town of Dunedin uh, or fellow Americans will call it Dunedin, not Canadians, but yeah, uh, not Canadians. Uh, but other everyone else um, that we would have regular season baseball in the city. And I just, you know, I've, I've thanked the commission and I've thanked others in the past, but I just want to thank uh, everyone for the cooperation and help as we went through a challenging year last year to get regular season baseball here, which involved a lot more um, uh, things that we're used to <laughs> from a security perspective, uh, lights and some other things. The school, uh, Curtis Fundamental, was amazing, allowing us to utilize some of their space to be able to ha make this happen. So I want to thank them, um, specifically Terry, um, um, superintendent, for able to help us with some parking issues and some lighting issues and some other things. So everybody was extremely cooperative throughout it. And even the residents, as we were probably a little bit louder than normal, um, everybody was really cooperative. So you can definitely see the partnership. Um, and, um, you know, I just want to again thank everyone. Please come out. We're here until April the uh, 5th. Um, we have games. We have lots of seats on sale because um, we just went on sale about a week ago because of the schedule. Uh, please, I, I can't offer any whiskey. Um, tasting, unfortunately, um, I think we do have some whiskey, but um, we definitely don't offer the tasting part. But we have a ton of craft beer, including Dundee Brewery and many other local beers that are there to please test it out at our Eddie's Bar or WestJet Flight Deck or um, behind home plate. We have lots of different uh, food options, drink options, and we're really proud of the stadium. So I hope everyone that wasn't able to come two years ago uh, when we actually opened will be able to uh, come this year. Um, and come to a game, and then don't forget the Dunedin Blue Jays season that will start on April the 8th uh, on the Friday, um, and uh, you know that great season ahead of us. So we're excited. We're excited to get the season started, and I just want to appreciate, uh, thank everybody on this commission and, and the city uh, for everything that you guys do to help us. We love you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, did. Um, I just want to tag on Shelby um, because Vince and I did, uh, you know fairly recently have lunch with the high school coach. And um, and I have to say, he, he just went on and on about specifically you and how great you've been um, for, on behalf of the Blue Jay organization. And it means a lot because obviously, you know, that's our future. And, um, and I know that's always been important to you, but I think um, with the new coach, you've just, you know, gone over the top and it's very appreciated. I know you've gotten almost all their games, if not all of their home games there. So really appreciate all their hard work. And, and just in general, you're, you, you, you're around town and you do a lot for town. So thank you. Thank you. And, and, you know, definitely come to see their game. They also see the ballpark. We had to move one of their games to 4 o'clock because we got five straight games uh, to try to give our, our field an opportunity to, 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 to breathe, to rest, and, and to recoup. So they've been helpful on that. Um, but I, I appreciate those words. He's been great. Um, we've had him at the PDC. We're trying to we're trying to help them as best we can with the kids. Um, and um, you know, I've tried to go to a couple of the games and meet some of the some of their kids. And my daughter, for some reason now she's in high school, she wants to go to some games. So I don't know why she's now in <laughs> baseball. But who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? That's but I uh, appreciate it. So Shelby, how, what was your count for opening day? We were. Uh, just over 4,800, um, which um, is... You had to have more than that. It felt like it. Because, it, it yeah. did. I mean, the it, reason it, I'm asking yeah. is, you know, and... It felt full. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gus Bilirakis, our congressional representative, was, was at the game with us for a while. And, you know, a lot of people that aren't... Maybe don't grow up with spring training or, you know, it's not their thing or aren't in a town... That, um, and especially when they're elected leaders, you know, they see the big dollars and they don't understand. And um, we were standing out on the balcony. I mean, I won't say all the seats were full, but it looked to me like I would say 80% of them. Yeah. Yeah. And this was probably fifth inning, sixth inning. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, but we added more seats. And when you looked around the boardwalk, it was packed. I mean, packed. And, and you know, that was something we got questioned on over and over and over again during during our, yeah. our months and years of, you know, trying to get funding. That 
could we go from 5,500 capacity to not, what is it, 98 or so, whatever it no, is, it was nine? Just about 8,000. Okay, 8,000. 8, and I'm telling you, that I've never seen it that full. It wasn't that full on opening day when the, to me, it didn't feel that full on opening day, first, first game in the new stadium. So it was, he was totally impressed. Um, and I was totally proud that all of us and our city took the big leap. And I could just feel, we saw it unfold, that it, that it is capable of having that many people there. Yeah, and I'll say this, um, you're right, our, hope, our home opener uh, two years ago, we, we didn't sell it, we didn't expect to, it's February. Um, you see in baseball, your, your major league players aren't playing the entire game. But we knew um, the week that unfortunately we all closed down, uh, we had the next five games sold out, um, and we knew we were. I was excited to see what that place looked like full. I mean, we have a certain number of seats, and then we have what we call standing room only. Uh, we're a boardwalk, or you can hang out in eddies, or a lot of different places. And we wanted to see what that looked like. We were going to start with X number, and then get a little bit higher and a little bit higher to see how many people we can fit in there and make it comfortable for everyone. Um, so hopefully next year we'll oh, actually I know next year we'll have that opportunity. I think people are really excited to come down. The team is the Toronto Blue Jay Club is really really good this They're year. Good um, yeah. You know we were we were one win out of making it to the playoffs last year, um, and we had three different homes last year from coming from here yeah. to, to Buffalo, Buffalo to Toronto and the uh, challenges that our organization had to go through and the players and how well that they played and we made some great off season moves and we're really excited about the team. But I agree. I'm. You know, to look out and to be be here for, like I said, for 14 years and to see that ballpark yes, uh, on it Sunday um, and to see some of the things that we added, like the boardwalk or, sorry, the um, Orange Trail, we yeah. call it, um, and WestJet flight deck in that area, Eddie's, was just cool to see and people walking around. I mean, the biggest thing that yeah, I've seen over the years is like you didn't have that space that you could go walk and hang out. Uh, and unfortunately, we couldn't do that last year because of social distancing. But yeah. this year uh, you can see it. And, you know, the, the reaction from the fans was was amazing. So. And, and interestingly enough, after uh, the game, we left and purposely went to a couple of businesses along the way back to downtown. They were all packed, yeah. packed with fans that had gone to support our businesses after the game. So, and I wanted to see that. I wanted to see if people were extending it, you know, for me, you know, because that's what I always felt that I saw before. So it was, it was really cool. And it was, it, it just sort of secured for me that, you know, we made a lot of good decisions. Thank you. And I want to mention one thing because I forgot. They need an EMS that helps us that are at every one of our games. I think we have six members that join us and that go to the city and uh, that also do our Dunedin Blue Jay games. They're, they're awesome. They're really helpful. They're always there. Um, they come, you know, uh, in our in our need, um, you know, last minute because we didn't know our schedule um, and always really helpful uh, working with us and, and being a partner to us uh, to be able to make sure that we're able to be successful and also take care of some of our fans. It, it gets hot in there um it's it's uh, especially this this march it's it's quite uh, hot outside so they've been they've been really helpful so i, 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 I want to make sure i hear we them. need uh long sleeve shirts for mayor's challenge uh, is it supposed to be colder then that's good because our jay shop they have a lot of long sleeve yeah. shirts uh, uh, i just got a new short sleeve uh, shirt i have them in my closet we, so um, i might just wear a shirt underneath the shirt <laughs> oh no blue jays attire only uh, i mean i'm gonna wear my okay. blue jay t-shirt okay. And uh, for those that didn't get, and I know uh, uh, Vice Mayor Kynes didn't get all, I have some bucket hats. I forgot to bring them, but I'll bring them over that we were giving away on, on opening day. That's so uh, those are bucket really hats nice are great. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Appreciate it. Keep us posted on the, on the great attendance. Will do. All right. See you later. Yeah, I have 66 on Sunday. Oh, my God. That's what's predicted. Whoa. So just what so is you it? Know. High of, High of 66. Yeah, so yes, I'm definitely going to need. Snow day. So. They might need to cancel that. Long sleeve shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's a snow day. Now I'm going to have to figure that out. Yeah, sorry. I bought well, a new shirt know, right? for next weekend, and it was short. You know, and, and while I wasn't able to make the game, I did hear, and Shelby, you might want to hear this, that I heard that your bike rack was overflowing. 
-huh. So that might be something that you want to just monitor so that you might need get a second one. We have moved a couple of additional ones in because there we, we go. go. All, right. All right. Okay. You're happy. I am very happy. What a great morning. Well done, that, that was just such a nice mm -hmm. little moment. Yeah. Okay, now it's time for citizen input. Anyone, anyone wishing to speak on a topic that's not already on the agenda? Come on down. Oh, what a lovely job. <laughs> hey, Howard, how are you? I'm just, I'm just fine. Name's Howard Gray. I'm at uh, 1617 Brook Drive. I have an issue that uh, I hesitate to bring before the board, uh, but uh, it's a problem that I brought up to the clerk's office with the, with the previous clerk <laughs> and this clerk's office and to the city manager's uh, staff. And the problem goes away a little bit and then comes back up. And I know you're all wondering, just what could that possibly be? And it's, uh, it's a simple thing. It's uh, these PDF files that you routinely use. Um, they're, they're somehow being created as photographs. In other words, they're being scanned in probably, or you're using software to remove the text layer in the file. So, so I'd like you to change whatever that business process is that, that you're doing, to change it a little bit so that the text layer remains within the PDF. So like, instead of picking on, on uh, the clerk, let me pick on the city manager staff just a little bit. Everybody uh, does. Yeah, no, like nobody <laughs> does that, right? <laughs> Just log on to Facebook and you'll see it. Uh, so so you, you, you have, in, the, in today's meeting, you have a 99-page uh, report, uh, for your report. And that entire report, if you try and drag your mouse across it to select some text, you'll see that it does nothing. And that's because th that PDF is created by probably by scanning in the document on your fancy uh, Minolta scanner. And uh, you have the OCR layer turned off by default, probably. And, and so the solution may be as simple as having Mr. Nagy look at your business process and, and, and get the IT guys to set the default to OCR on. OCR is optical character recognition, and scanner software typically has that installed so that they can put that layer in there. And that way, when I want to take some important information and share it with other people, I can just copy it out of the report and paste it in to another email without me having to retype it. And, and, and also, if I want to write back to the clerk's office and say, yes, that November 14th meeting, I see what they said, but uh, this is wrong, I, in my opinion. And it needs to be fixed and makes my job easier as a citizen to do that. It's also a violation of the American Disabilities Act. That usually, I just throw that out there to get your attention because uh, I would never sue over that because I'm not litigious. Um, but why is it against that act? It's so that blind people can use software to read those documents. So if you hide it, it, it looks like you're intentionally hiding it. I know that's not the case. I think it's just uh, errors in your business process. So I bring that up. And by the way, all of you, if you ever read any of these documents uh, from uh, your city manager or clerk, and you say, oh, that's interesting. Let me copy that into an email. And you swipe across it, and you can't copy it. That's an indication you're looking at a photograph rather than a text document. So, so you should know that, and you should have been complaining, and you should have fixed this a long time ago. So not that, not that I'm complaining about you, because I love you guys, and I love our city manager, because she's terrific, and, uh, and I just want the process fixed. Okay, I hope I didn't, I, I went over my three minutes, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Howard. Thank you. Obviously, uh, Jennifer, you and Rebecca and Nikki will sure. talk about all those things. And yes. You'll let us know at some point in the future what, what's determined. I, I just, I'll just make one brief comment that if anyone ever needs any documents from the city that has a vision impairment, the city regularly makes reasonable accommodations to make sure all of our documents and information are accessible, and that will be done as well with regard to any specific documents that have been mentioned today. Um, also, there is no 100% way to make any a, Adobe PDF accessible for all types of readers that are used for low vision um, assistance. And so that's why it can be made in a specific, specific request for reasonable accommodation so that way it can be converted to the appropriate reader 
for that PDF. So I just wanted to say that, Mayor, so that that wasn't a concern. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wow, that was good. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else want to come forward and talk about anything that's not already on the agenda? Okay. Um, we have the consent agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from February 17th. Board and committee appointments of Arts and Culture, Historic Preservation, Local Planning Agency, and Public Safety. Then we have the Wastewater Lift Station Rehab Annual Contract. We have the third addendum to the Golf Course Licensing Agreement. We have the award of bid for the purchase of sodium something something for water. And yeah, I'm not even going down that road. Too early. These early mornings are killing. So you could say it, not even think about it, not me. Uh, rat and the ratification of our emergency purchase order for uh, the sanitary sewer <clears throat> failure that occurred on 115 Edgewater Drive. Are there any items to be pulled? Mayor, could you pull 2D, please? 2D. Okay, golf course. Gotcha. All right, any anything else? No. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve everything but 2D? So moved. Second. Vice Mayor and Commissioner Franey. <clears throat> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, did you have a question or did you want a presentation? Uh, just a, a, a quick even even summary, just because of the size of the asset yep. and where we are, I just thought it was important that the public see it. Thank you, and of course, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Jeff is our liaison to the golf course. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Vince Gizzi, Parks and Recreation Director. This is the third addendum to the Dunedin Golf Club License Agreement. The current license agreement with Dunedin Golf Club is scheduled to expire on June 25th, 2022, in order to provide sufficient time for city to work through all of the functions of a transition plan, as well as allow the Dunedin Golf Club time for forgiveness of a PPP loan in the amount of $285,000. The city is requesting an extension of the term of the agreement for an additional six months up to two additional three-month options, and the options are at the request of the city. Club will continue to take action that are deemed necessary by the board for continued operations and maintenance of the course. The city manager or designee shall review and approve the following. All capital projects greater than 25,000, replacement of any management personnel, entering into any new contracts or agreements, any changes in articles of incorporation bylaws, membership terms or rates, and events to be held after December 25th. The city manager or designee would have the, um, uh, will, will, will have to approve those to, in order for them to happen. All other provisions of the agreement shall remain in full force and effect. The final license agreement payment of $125,000 shall be due under our existing license agreement on March 31st, 2022. City Attorney Nikki Day has approved this third addendum as to form. Staff recommends a city commission approval of this third addendum of the Dunedin Golf Club license agreement. And with that, I'll answer any questions. Yeah, no, no questions. I just wanted the public to hear the summary on it. And, and you, you've been a part of this process. You feel comfortable with everything that we're doing? I feel very comfortable. I think it's all been transparent. I think the communication between the city and the board uh, have been satisfactory to me. Um, and so I think it's a, it's a good, healthy process we're going through, so yes. Okay, any mm -hmm. questions for Vince? No. No? Okay, any public input? Thank you. Seeing or hearing none, can I have a motion to approve that agreement? So moved. Second. Okay, Commissioner Gao and Commissioner Franey. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, well, our only action item today is the proposed agenda for our next Tuesday meeting. Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, uh, Jennifer has an update for us today, and it'll take about 10 minutes, so we need to allow enough time for that to occur. On the off-leash dog. Huh? On the off-leash dog. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we didn't do that earlier before, could we? Yeah, let's do just that. Just in case I have Well, to. we're going to, yeah, let's just take a look at that agenda real quick. Everybody okay? okay. Um, yep, looks good to me. I, I, I'm really happy to see the, the cybersecurity training coming before mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Um, I thought that was really good. Okay. Um, 
Are, are we having all of the nonprofits here that day, or is that just no, your proposal of how to handle it? The proposal of how to handle okay. it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Because that's, that's a lot different than having them all here. All right. Just checking. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Vice, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Vice Mayor and Commissioner Franey, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Yeah, Jennifer, why don't you go ahead and give us your city manager update now? Sure, thank you very much. I'm going to ask Commissioner Franey might need to leave a little early. Step up. So, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners, a gentleman appeared before the Commission during citizens' input on two separate occasions, and he was concerned about off leash dogs at Hammock Park. And off leash dogs are permitted for two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening um, on um, uh, Monday through Friday. So the, uh, that was followed quickly by the other side, the off-leash dog owners. Who, incidentally, in being a dog owner, I did notice that, that, that dog owners know other dogs' names, but not the owners' names, which is funny. <laughs> Everybody said, you know, I'm, I'm Fluffy's mom, or I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or something like that. And they, they knew other people by their dog's name. But regardless, so you heard a lot of input from those residents as well. Um, regarding the off-leash dogs. And so uh, staff asked the commission uh, for a little bit of time and that we would report back to you um, the, the situation in, in, in the park during the off-leash hours. Uh, it, of note, though, is that this is actually not a policy decision. It is an operational decision, uh, and the code actually authorizes the city manager myself to make the decision. And so we have made a decision. But what we committed to you uh, was to do a lot of research on it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a a quick decision, we wanted to get all the background, and Commissioner Franey had asked us to reach out to dog professionals as well, people who are in the biz, if you will, and really understand uh, the implications of off-leash dogs. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Vince, and he's going to tell you some of the research that staff did to arrive at our conclusion. Okay. Good morning again. Vince Gizzi, Parks and Recreation Director. I just have a, a quick report I'd just like to share with you. Uh, so at the November 5th, 2009 City Commission meeting, ordinance 9-19 leash law was approved by the city commission including the ordinance that the city manager at her discretion has the ability to designate specific days and times on certain public property where dogs would be allowed off leash as she as she mentioned old youth guild area at hammock park was designated and has been for 12 years monday through friday 7 a.m to 9 a.m and 4 p.m to 6 p.m and those hours were on the slower side at the park. So that was the, um, the times that were chosen and the area really was being underused as well. Uh, recently, a concerned resident who frequently visits Hammock Park with his dog voiced his opinion during citizens' input. Uh, his opinion was the dog's owners are not following the rules and considers this off-leash area to be dangerous or for other park users and their dogs. Due to this resident's concern, the city manager was asked by the city commission to investigate the situation and come back with a recommendation. Here is what we learned and what we, and what we have done. Over the past three to four weeks, staff, including the city manager, Jennifer, uh, Deputy City Manager Jorge, our park attendant Phil Beck, and myself visited and kept a close eye on the activities of the off-leash hours. We also checked with uh, Deputy Fallahy, who's here this morning, uh, from Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, who told me that during the last year, there was about 15 calls regarding the off-leash area, and that at least 10 of them calls were from the same person. We also met with Doug Brightwell, Director of Pinellas County Animal Services, to obtain his opinion of this off-leash area. Mr. Brightwell wrote, Good morning, Vince. The off-leash dog area in Hammock Park is very peaceful. It is well marked with proper signage regarding the off-leash times. The area has well-defined natural boundaries and even the, the front area by the parking lot provides good buffer before entering the neighborhood. Animal Services does not, Animal Services does not have a complaint history of this off-leash area and also one incident which was two years ago. There are no changes I would recommend to the area. The citizens I have heard this morning we're all compliant with the posted rules. Please contact me if you have any additional questions or concerns. In further conversations with Mr. Brightwell, he also mentioned that uh, there are no requirements for fencing in off-leash dog areas. On Monday, March 14th, 2022, I brought this item to the Hammock Park Advisory Committee 
After discussion of this item, the committee voted unanimously in favor of keeping the off-leash area at Hammock Park open and continue operating as it has for the past 12 years. Giving very few calls to the Sheriff's Office, the comments that the Director of Animal Services and the unanimous vote of the Hammock Advisory Committee, there is no change that I would recommend for the use of this area. If there's any questions, I can answer them. No, I'm good. I, I, I just want to thank the city manager and Vince. Uh, you know, obviously I reacted strongly when the gentleman came forward. Of course, I learned after that when I talked to a couple of the individuals that he was speaking about that things were not as, as he said. Um, but I feel good about this. Doug Brightwell, director of Pinellas County Animal Services, is really, he's seen the good and bad, the ugly. You know, he signs the dangerous dog things. He sees what happens around the county. He's got a, a wealth of experience, and I think... You know, having him look at it and getting that kind of an email, that, that speaks volumes. I feel really good about it. And uh, and obviously, the people of, that use it have reached out and been very professional in just expressing what a good place it's been for them. So I'm, I'm good. I was very happy of how it was handled, and I think it was... Uh... It represents Dunedin in, in, in our, our relationship with our animals, and we all love the dogs. And when something like that comes up, people hear it, and now they need to know what does it mean, and, and, and you've covered that. So I think it's important that we look into things when citizens have concerns, or when we are creating a concern, uh, people think there may be a concern, that we come with some solid resolution, and I think that's occurred here, so thank you. Um, you know, uh, an issue was brought forward, and I feel very comfortable that all due diligence was done. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and that uh, also that you, you took it to your committees, and they were also aware of the allegations and issues uh, complained of. And again, I feel very comfortable with the due diligence and how it was handled. I concur. So do I. It was funny when I was reading the minutes of when we approved this ordinance, it brought me totally back to the things we ask about, I swear. <laughs> it was funny reading it because um, I wouldn't have asked half of those questions today. Just not the same person, you know. But um, but I did notice, and not to, not to be negative in any way, but I did notice that I expressed my concern about enforcement of the leash law. And this was back in 2009. And that it, you know, just, we don't, ha we don't have the people to do it, and it's certainly not the priority of the sheriff. I mean, they will come, but by the time they get there, the, the offense has occurred. So anything that you guys can continue to do, um, it is a fearful situation for, for folks when they're walking through Hammock. I'm not talking about by the park or the you know, the area of off-leash. I'm talking about people that actually let them be off-leash. Um, I've seen it out at the causeway. You're not allowed to have dogs out on the causeway, only on the trail. And I, I know we have a lot of signage out there, but they, people don't know what they don't know. Um, so there are hot-button areas that I think, you know, we really need to enforce this at and and hammock and the causeway are, are two things so i just want to make sure we try to bump that up in some way or another and i don't i don't know how we do it but mayor can i tag on to that and um vince when i talked to uh mr brightwell he, there's something they're strengthening with the off-leash rules because they are having problems on this in other areas of the county um we probably just need to make sure because i can't remember exactly what it was it was voice control or hand con I signal forget. control. i forget and he of course he he got some they got some pushback with some of the organizations and and they've had to assure them because some of the organizations are again just like hammock they're, they've got it under control but it might be good for us to just be up on some of the problems they're dealing with so that we're you know again going back to what you said doesn't mean you don't have problems anywhere we want to make sure we're all up on the newer laws so yeah but um yeah. yes ma'am so, um, Mayor, uh, thank you, Vince, for your due diligence on this. He was really all over this. It took yeah. this very, very seriously. So I, I really appreciate that. He was out there a lot. And also Deputy Fallahy, who was, uh, who was uh, very instrumental in, in, in arriving at the correct, what I believe is the correct decision, um, and, and, and actually called this to our attention 
a while ago as well. So, and I will be submitting my dry cleaning bill since I was slobbered on by a labradoodle when I was <laughs> Well, Sweetest dog in the world, but that is say hello. So cute. <laughs> yeah, since you had a little humor, can I? Did anybody notice below Doug's name the logo for yeah. the Love of Animals? Yeah. That was created while I was director of animal services. Aww. And I always loved it, the little frisbee with Pinellas County and yeah. the dogs. Yeah. Anyway, so that's cool. Saying. That's cool. Thank um, you. And we have our. Is it Jason? Our, park our, our park person that goes out to the causeway in Hammock? Yes, Phil Beck. Phil. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, Phil. And the two biggest issues that he deals with is, is dogs and golf carts. Right. So, your golf carts are in the right places. And you know, uh, I remember hearing George say yesterday that we, we're hopefully getting our going to get our citation thing underway. I would hope that he could be able to do that right there in Hammock or or the causeway if he sees the thing happening, you know? Um, few of those, now people are gonna be mad, but a few of those, it'll stop. Mm -hmm. It will, um, so, yeah. just as an idea. Okay, uh, nothing for us to <clears throat> vote on. Thank you very much for thank all you. the hard work and thank you for the quick response. That's a pretty quick response for something like this, so thank really you. appreciate it. All right, now we will, um, go to our workshop item, which is our 2022 business plan initiative first quarter update. Um, so Jennifer, yes. I was, you know, looking it over last night and I know how we get, we, we, uh, you give us an update and then it spurs 10,000 questions. And I don't, I don't know how to not make that happen. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's kind of the only time the commission has to ask those questions. Yes. So we're prepared. Okay. Yeah. We're all the department directors are here. All right. So maybe what we'll do is after every section, maybe after what's the best way to do this? Per I guess per is one department head doing their entire thing or are no, they coming back and forth? They'll just actually it in it's organized by the EPIC goal and the department within that EPIC goal. And so the department will come up, talk about some, some of the more uh, larger scale projects or more impactful things, and then we're, we'll be more than happy to address any of the questions that you While they're have. there. So perhaps if we could go by EPIC goal, and each EPIC goal, you won't have all the department directors because not all the departments are right. involved in all of them. Okay, but, we'll go by is, EPIC goal then. I'm just trying to figure out the best, more most manageable way to, right. to make it not feel like people are getting up and Right. You know. There might be some of that, but they know they're ready. Okay. So, Mayor, if I could give just sure. an introduction really mm -hmm. quickly. So, the business plan is is the document by which we plan the, the first of all, the initiatives for the year and then the five-year capital improvement program as well. Typically, we report out on the business plan during your uh, strategic planning retreat, which was yesterday. Um, I, I thought it might be a better idea to do it during a city commission workshop when we have the time to do it so that it's a little more transparent so that those who are watching understand that we have uh, a, um, a definitive, if you will, work program called the business plan for the year. Every initiative is, is uh, organized under a, um, a goal and every initiative has a, um, a funding source, has a department and a time frame as well. It has a list of objectives, and also you'll see it, we have a list of all of the uh, committees that are touched by that particular initiative or have seen uh, projects within that in initiative. We report out quarterly. Um, in this case, this is the first quarter, which was <coughs> October of last year through, through December of last year. We're almost through with the second quarter of fiscal year 2022, so we're dealing with just that time frame. You might look at an initi initiative and say, well, we're way farther along than that. Um, this is just the first quarter, and we, we may well be, but this is the first quarter. So with that, I'm right, going to... I'm going to also say to you, I think we need to do the questions by slide because there's multiple slides for each goal, and I think it would be cumbersome to go back and forth. Say that again. You see what I'm saying? Um, the PowerPoint. Yeah, if that, if that would I be better I think that's going to be that's easier. That way we don't have to keep backtracking. Yeah. Sure, that's fine. Okay. Sorry. I should have had this figured out before I came in the door. But good. We've perfectly had, all right. It's been a busy yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, it's a busy uh, week. It Les, do you have anything to add? Not over. <laughs> yeah. all right, yeah. No, I was going to make a few a few minor comments just, Go ahead. just briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Jennifer mentioned this is the first quarter of 2022. 
and we approved the business plan and the budget on September 23rd, 2021. Uh, there's an exhibit attachment A in the staffing that, uh, that shows all the different uh, uh, updates by, by goal and then by department like the city manager mentioned. I just want to briefly mention that we're going to start with Epic Goal 1, of course, and, uh, and, that'll, and, and in department order. The first department will be the city manager's department. But before we do that, I just want to briefly go over from left to right uh, what's, what's in each of these slides. If you could turn to the next one. Sure. Um, this is the city manager as an example. I just wanted to briefly mention that uh, each of these show from left to right uh, the goal number, uh, the project name, the project status, either new or existing, the lead department for that project, uh, the fund that it is, is in, and some have multiple funds, the dollar amount as adopted in the 22 budget and business plan, the status or progress uh, of each initiative uh, as provided by the departments, and then the percentage completed as uh, provided by the departments for the first quarter. And then it talks about the type of business plan, uh, business plan initiative or CIP project, and then the page number referenced uh, is on the far right, uh, th that's the page number in the 22 to 27 business plan. And then also you'll see a few that are shaded in gray and this one is an example. And that indicates that there is more than one fund associated with that project. So just wanted to go over that again and then I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to the city manager. Thank you very much, Les. And I'll turn it over to the assistant to the city manager mm -hmm. <laughs> for Hi, the sister Nicole. city program. Good morning. Good morning. I will be very brief and brilliant. <laughs> uh, obviously, I know I've been talking with you all quite a bit about uh, the Sister City program. Our visitor actually arrives Friday. Um, so as far as the expenses to this um, has just been the annual Sister Cities membership. Um, and then we'll see some more expenses um, after her visit. Um, as far as public art, we have the contract, the annual contract uh, with our consultant. So we're 25% spent um, as far as the first quarter. Um, and then as far as public art master plan implementation, um, we really are focusing on uh, existing projects right now um, and getting those completed with the water tower and the new city hall art as for, and then the restoration of our existing pieces. So as we move along the year, we'll start to look at uh, what we can consider for new public art projects. And Any questions for Nicole? I do. Uh -huh. Um, I saw the jaywalk, huh? Yes. So the jaywalk is moving. The jaywalk is moving. Uh, the RFP, I think, is in Chuck's hands. I'm not sure if it's actually been released yet. I will have to check on that. The committee, their committee has been put together and has met um, one time, and we've got a schedule for getting that completed. I believe the completion would be in June. Okay. And that's, on a, too. and that's on a separate line item in the budget. So Exciting. Where is it moving to? You mean location? Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I, no one's told me the location. Uh, we've got a plan that indicates actually two areas. So when you walk up on the corner um, where the where the new sign is, where the walk the sidewalk kind of goes around, that area will be will have a, a mural on the sidewalk, and then the area where the it's like the Uber pickup bus drop off. Gotcha. That area. Mm -hmm. So we had talked, I know Paul's here, we had talked about the street and we just uh, no, didn't want to go there. <laughs> they, they, they are tending to do more like in front of libraries, you know, in park areas where there's lower traffic. Um, that's what I was reading on some of these uh, uh, road murals. Right. So, no, thank you for that. I, I've, all my questions are like right now. So should I move forward? If it's pertaining to this page. It is? Yes. Okay. Um, the art incubator. So where are we exactly? Oh, that's on a different that's page. A different that's on a different somebody, page. That's somebody else. Yeah, that's on a different page. <laughs> He's off on that you're, on, you're not on the right page. That's Bob. It's art incubator right Honey, there. right, this is the page we're on. Oh, okay. Well, I'm on my own page. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think Bob's ready to talk about should, that. You know, put in history. <laughs> Anything else that's, that's on this page? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. Thank you for all your hard Thank work you, on the Sister City program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excited about that. Yes. And I can't wait to see a plan for the electrical boxes. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> oh, and I'm, I'm not well, in I'm rush on that, just so you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm really not. I think it can look junky. It can start to look junky. It's uh -huh. like too much. Less is more kind of theory. Wait, like, here's the next page. Utilities. I'm just, I mean, I just <clears> didn't want to overkill it, so. No, I think it's everyone. You know, every time I see one in Clearwater, it looks so good. Yeah, yeah. 
to me sometimes. It does not look junky. Yeah. It looks good. Sometimes less is more. That's yep. So, so we don't always have to agree on everything. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Community development. George. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, good to see you all again this morning. Uh, George Kinney on behalf of the Community Development Department. Um, really, these are pretty straightforward. Um, the historic landmark plaques, uh, that's an ongoing uh, uh, business initiative that we do. Uh, in this first quarter, we processed four, uh, but we've done nine over the last calendar year, 2021. So it's a very popular program and continuing to, to, continuing to grow. From the historic resources survey perspective, you may recall that we put in a grant for phase two and phase three of the historic resources survey, and we are actually still waiting word from the state. So there's been no progress, but uh, we are optimistic because Blair has had some conversations with the state, and it sounds like we might get that funding. So, so is that the so we're asking for the fifty thousand for the histor for this grant? So I was wondering why it was such a long time that we haven't heard on it is, is it just because of n now we might hear because everything's budgeted, it I, looks like at I, the I state? I think we'll hear something soon, Vice oh. Mayor, but I'm, I don't wanna say for sure. You just never know with the state until. Okay. But, but Blair, is, Blair Knighting, who is our consultant with Kimley Horn, is confident that um, the city's in a pretty good position to receive that award. Okay, thank you very much. See, I was on the right page now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? That's it. Thank, Thank you. you, George. Economic development. Dun, 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 dun. Look how big it is. Yeah. Bob Ironsmith, Economic Development Director. So uh, I've got a few items. Obviously, it is a pretty good comprehensive list there. A couple uh, ones of note. Obviously, we acquired the property there with the commission direction there at Scotland and Douglas uh, for to preserve parking opportunities. That was a big item for us, and obviously we took out a loan uh, with less uh, handling that for us. In addition, a great opportunity to mention we have the facade program, both in the downtown and outside in um, the citywide. This is a matching program for any commercial business that wants to improve the look and appearance of the front. Could be things such as awnings or planter boxes or anything really to adorn the front to make it more attractive. The other item, leased parking. As I mentioned to you, we have quite a bit of leased parking downtown. We're looking to continue that. Uh, we just kind of finalized discussions with the Justice lot. That's the one over there by um, the, the, the uh, Greg Gracie. And we're looking to take that here to the commission uh, shortly at the next uh, CRA meeting. Be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Now you can ask your question. Okay. Yeah. Where are we exactly on the art incubator? I saw that you paid first quarter and the CRA paid first quarter and economic and housing development looks like paid first quarter. So can, where are we exactly yeah, in those uh, negotiations? Uh, yeah, and both city manager and, uh, and myself have been working on that. We've had discussions with uh, Archangels and the Dunedin Fine Art Center. Uh, we're looking to see what opportunities present itself and then we're looking to uh, put together uh, something to uh, present, and I'll, I'll defer a little bit to uh, to Jennifer on that. Okay, so you have been in negotiations with the owner. We, we've yes. been we, we've been discussing with the owner, uh, Mr. Davis, uh -huh. uh, and Archangels, and Mr. Coleman, and uh, his uh, retained attorney, uh, Deborah Bushnell, uh -huh. as well as the Dunedin Fine Art Center. So there's quite a bit of moving pieces. We're looking to see what. Uh, opportunities really present themselves. So we've had some good discussion with the owner, uh, Mr. Davis. He's been fairly direct with us. And uh, I think part of that is- As he usually is. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean direct, but also uh, direct. pretty pretty transparent. And uh, uh, the retained consultant, Doug Hutchins, has a good relationship with him. <clears throat> and, and Doug's been the one that's kind of been uh, discussing with him. So we kind of know exactly where Mr. Davis is at this point in time, which we didn't know a month ago. So. Yeah. So I guess <laughs> I'm asking is when will this all be sort of figured out, you think? I, I would imagine it's, well, it's March now. It will be able to bring it forward in April, probably. Yeah, I'd say April or, or, or beginning of May. The lease is up in September. Mm -hmm. um, we've certainly kept everyone abreast what, what, what we're looking mm -hmm. to do and looking to accomplish. It's, it's a complex issue. Yes, it is. From the perspective yes. that you have a lot of there, partners. there's a lot of partners, there's a lot of moving pieces. Mm -hmm. And there was quite a bit of history, mm -hmm. and it's how to, uh, you know, how do you look to, to, to put it together? So there's pros and cons, obviously, with, with, with lease extension. Okay. 
then my second one is on the facade grant. I was really interested in seeing uh, that you have, I think, 90000 but only one, one facade grant has been awarded so far this year. Yeah, Correct. typically that happens. You know, typically what happens is the businesses get real busy and then they go ahead and look to do some of the stuff during their off off season. So, yeah, we, we, we've had more dollars in there because obviously we initially thought with the pandemic and the COVID that this was a great opportunity. Actually, it was the opposite. The businesses were just trying to hold the fort down and keep themselves open, and they weren't really interested even in any matching dollars. They just want to get going. I think now uh, commercial businesses, restaurants are in a much better position, and we expect that to pick up here. And the grant is just for? Yeah, sure, certainly. Uh, the, the grant is uh, matching dollars. Mm -hmm. It's $5,000 now, mm -hmm. and uh, the $5,000 can be paint, awnings, signage, any, anything to adorn. So it's a really good program. And, and it's then matched. And it's matched. It's mm -hmm. both downtown mm -hmm. and most importantly, it's citywide. So Patricia, commercial. 580, yeah, commercial for commercial businesses and Thank operations. You. Any other questions? Go ahead. When is the expiration for the art incubator? Uh, September, I believe. Okay. Not exact. It's definitely September. I'm not sure exact date, uh, Commissioner. I mean, you know, I've been pretty transparent. Time is good because if we have to react differently, you know, well, Everybody we have, needs to, so. yeah, per commission direction previously, we have <laughs> notified them that they should continue to look at options. And we have forwarded various possibilities. None of them have, uh, you know, okay. looked to go in that direction. Both of them would like to stay, of course. I don't know if it would, maybe it's Rebecca. Can somebody send us the minutes of when, the, you know, when we discuss this? Because I, I, I very, very clearly remember our discussion, but mm -hmm. I just want to reread it and refamiliarize, knowing that this is coming. Right. Whenever you have the minute, it's not urgent, emergent. I just, I just want to get myself back up to speed as to, I mean, I remember what we did. I just want right. to see how, how did we say it? And yeah, it's complicated. It is complicated, but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure yeah. we were very clear. So, yeah. I think it's frustrating for us we were. because we, were, we were very clear and we took kind of a hard stand. And well. If I may, you know, sometimes things change if the partners step up. True. Oh, totally. No, totally. So, Don't disagree you know, with that at all. I mean, yeah. There, things can evolve right. to a situation that you Happy may to not hear have it. heard a year ago. Right. So. But I know we were really putting kind of a line down mm -hmm. to say, yeah, you just, know, it's got to step up because otherwise yeah. we, we yeah. can't we really can't justify it. it. It's not that I don't like it just we got to justify it right yeah. taxpayers well, so what i will say because i don't want to get ahead of this because yeah. they're not here obviously right. and right. so what i will say is that when staff sat down with uh the parties we said in order to continue this you've got to step up and they did so okay good yeah, yes. I, mm -hmm. yeah i was just going to piggyback on what, what jennifer mm -hmm. said letters were sent Put them on notice since that point in time, the parties have stepped up with some additional, uh, you know, uh, aspects. It relative. may not take it, take it all the way for all of you, but they have stepped up. Yeah, so and I think it's incumbent on us at least to share the, the right. new discussions with you. I think that's what City Manager mm -hmm. Jennifer wants to do. I also just wanted to point out, uh, I know One Commissioner Gallup no. just, just left, but. Well, I have something on the art incubator yeah. before you move on. Oh, uh, mine's on something different. My other question, so. Um, it's the art incubator, but it's also the business just north of it. I don't know what that business is, but there's a big boat there that is not. Uh, the you cafe know, racer? No, it's before. It's between the art and cafe race. There's a big boat. He's oh. usually got trailers there. It's a junk pile that's not fenced, and it's been there for years. I mean, and we don't, and then the art incubator, the fence that looks back and all the storage of his campers and, and boats, again, it doesn't have a privacy fence. You look right back in there, it's a big junk pile. I mean, it's, it's, it's an appropriate use that they want to do, but we don't, I mean, we've invested millions, not just us, but other businesses to make that corridor, the art, artisan corridor, and we have that stuff going on. So it just feels like we need to have, to have a stronger hand. Okay. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Go. Okay. My other question. Our building. So the our, the city hall, our existing city hall, what we're going to do, are we assessing the building? Yeah. I guess I'm just, okay. So we're in the process of that? We are. Yes. So you have any idea when we'll... engineer have a look at it. Jorge, do you, when do you think it'll be done? Well, 
morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Jorge Quintas, uh, Deputy City Manager. Yes, we uh, recently met with Mike McCarthy with Pannoni, and he's provided a draft scope uh, to basically assess the building and see um, if there's any concerns, any uh, major issues, any trigger points that would uh, require uh, a pretty substantial investment in bringing the building up to, uh, to current standards. And so uh, we're providing some input on that scope, and then he'll come back with a, uh, an associated cost for that, and then we'll go ahead and authorize that, that effort. So you guys, are, you're just looking at structurally how it is. I mean, He's looking at it. it would probably take a, I mean, even if it's structurally okay, to me it would take a lot of money to make it look good, but um, I guess those are two different. Yeah, it's, it, his scope is not just structural. He's also looking at the mechanical uh, equipment in, in the building and, and the basics. roofing system yeah, the basics. And, and the whole okay. bit. So basically, would, it, would anything trigger that 50% rule and then all of a sudden work okay. into a pretty substantial investment? The squirrels in the ceiling were also reviewing. The, how long, how long will that take ceiling. him to do? Um, what do you suspect? I don't know. I, I would think that once we authorize him, he'd probably be done in a month, I would think. Okay, because, I mean, I, I think we all want to... I mean, especially with the budget coming up, mm -hmm. we need to know somewhat what direction we're going from a cost perspective for our budget, and if we can get money in the budget because. Is this the reuse? Yeah, yeah the reuse. And mm -hmm. that's that's. Exactly. What I, I had a question on that yeah. too. Because I mean, if we, whatever we do, whether we want to lease this out, whether we want to tear it down and make the park that we originally approved, whatever, it's going to cost money, mm -hmm. and so. I don't. I can tell you right now. I don't want to wait for two years to do that. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to move into our new building and leave and the leave thing this dark. To the rat, so to speak. Right, so to speak. Yeah. So whatever it is yeah. we do, we gotta. Okay. But there, you, gonna... you did put some money in it, and then I thought it was really interesting the way you your uh, no, nomenclature, your terminology, how you said it. So, from what you said in here, it's like reuse of city hall so it could be as you said it could be reused as vacant land Probably it could reused. be reused as you know a a building that's rehabilitated or something so it's it's a pretty wide swing with the terminology you used is am i understanding that yeah, I, I think from, from what I've been hearing, certainly that there's competing needs or competing wants or wishes for the, for the property. So I think it all needs to be addressed, whether it's a, a, a park You're or... so transparent, Deborah. I love you. <laughs> so, uh, in my way of thinking, two things need to happen. The structural integrity needs to be assessed to see what's involved, either with it coming down or repurposing. And then the other aspect is if there's any, you know, participation, public input, things of that nature, and how that's addressed. Well, I'm glad you're working on it. Sounds like you're close, and then have a month, and then we should see something. So, yeah. I is that a good summary? That's a good summary. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to mention to the vice mayor's uh, question: this quarter is kind of like October to December. We, uh, I just got a text from uh, Gina Garner. We've had five facade applications approved. Oh, good. So, so that, it's, wow. that wasn't. Right. Is Pfeiffer doing something? Yeah. Don't know how to check on it. We've been harassing them, as you know, Mayor, for quite a bit, and, and quite a bit. So I don't know. I'd have to check on that one. Well, we don't harass. Right. Ask each other. Just kidding, Bob. Well, you know, it's, good, but, you know, it's, not. it's because it was sort of complaint driven, and we were trying to solve it in a different yeah. We've way. Lot, and and we know him. He's a great community partner. We've spent a lot in Clearwater. Time. We just haven't gotten him to participate on this end. But who knows what's going on? So. Yeah. We've spent a lot of time. We'll have to see what the status is. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay. Uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, uh, the next the next item is the library, and Phyllis uh, gave me her update for this. She's at a, at a conference today, and I just wanted to briefly provide that update. Sure. She mentioned that um, she's still doing fundraising to fully fund the playground, and it will likely move to the 23 budget. So, makes sense. Okay. I like the I like the one percent complete though. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. She's got one thousand. Gotta have something. Right? I guess. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vince. I I I gotta go grab a cup of coffee. You keep going. It's not that I don't want to hear what you had to say, but I I got I need caffeine. Uh oh. You know what that means? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning, Vince Gizzy, Parks and Recreation Director. Again, as I mentioned yesterday at our strategic planning session, uh, the two uh, the the 
the two projects that I hear the most from are the, the dog park, our own dog park. We do have the one that is working out of Achieve and working very well for us, um, but on our own property and also the pickleball courts. So um, the dog park uh, has moved to fiscal year 23 and the site we had to be determined at the moment, but I think we're moving towards uh, doing the investigative work on on the Sterling Link or the Sterling Park site. So engineering uh, is doing a, a study. I actually got a report on Friday that I have not read, and this is a study on the drainage uh, to see you know how appropriate it would be or what we would need to do on the site in order to make it a a, a, a really good uh, dog park. Um, we had when we had the dog park at Van Eck, it was underwater like half the year, so we don't want to get into that situation as well. So um, we are doing that study. Engineering is doing the study on, on the drainage. I saw a first report on, um, on Friday that uh, uh, I'm in the process of reviewing and meeting with the engineer once I do. Um, the pickleball courts we talked a little bit about yesterday as well. Engineering is also doing the study um, on the drainage and also the geotech uh, geotechnical uh, concerns. Uh, once the drainage and the geotechs are, we have solutions for, um, there will be a community involvement process as well as for, the, for the, the dog park. So the dog park and the pickleball courts, we will be in the communities and throughout the city uh, discussing our, our recommendations. Um, this is uh, the next one. Um, is one I'm really, really excited about because it's going to get 35 of our employees out of the Jones building and into their new park operation facility off of, of Solon. We're about 75% done now. We're still just waiting on uh, our new air conditioning and our alarm system. Um, I believe they're going to be painting the, the, the floor today. If you haven't seen the building and, and the facilities there, it's really coming along very, very nicely. And I'm hoping to cut the ribbon in the next couple of couple of months and awesome. have our, our employees great. have a new, a new place to work too. out of. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great reuse. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do one more. This is um, what I'm calling 3A, uh, and it's the Sin, Sin Dune stage. So um, mm -hmm. this is the, there's there's a budget of 155,000 in the general fund um, for fiscal year 23. And again, we need to determine what the scope of the project is. Um, so we are exploring ideas, and uh, we, we should have enough money to certainly do um, construction documents once we, once we figure out what that is. Um, we have had architects and engineers and staff uh, look, at, look at the stage. I know a couple of commissioners have looked at it as well. Um, but last night, I contacted the designer of the building uh, to see if you know he had any thoughts on it, and so I scheduled a meeting with him um, next week to uh, to look at it a little closer and get his thoughts on the project. You know, it's um, thank you, Vince, for going that extra step. Thank you, Vince. I'll tell you, when I was in, you've been to Asheville. I know you've yeah. got mm -hmm. a couple of you yep. have. Um, I don't know what street it is on, but it's. It's kind of like a, I wouldn't call it a pocket park, but it, it's kind of like a pioneer park, but a, but mm -hmm. maybe twice the size. And it has this beautiful, um, I'll call it a stage, but it's, it's a performance area. Mm -hmm. People perform on it um, ad hoc. They do yoga classes there, but it's, it's really cool. It's got these trees around it that have all this ribbon hanging out of it, but it's, I just wish we could have something like that, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like. It must be by their city hall. That's I don't, what I'm thinking. I don't remember where the city area. hall is, but it's, it's mm -hmm. anyway, it's not attached to a building per se, mm -hmm. but it, and even if it could be at the building there, but it, it's like you said that yesterday, the great lawn, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the answer, but I don't either. getting the options and get it, and, and I think it's good to reach out to the builder because, I mean, that was the original intent. And unfortunately, I, nobody, we, none of us caught that, that it was really not, you know, suitable positioned right. And, um, and I don't know that anybody talked to the bands, like, does this work for you? And of course, now it doesn't, so. And a lot of the um, event promoters do bring out mm -hmm. their own stages, and then we yeah. also have the showmobile, so yeah. um, the stages could be located in different areas presently. 
Which is good, but I know part of the reason, part of the thing you have the issue with now is like when you have a lot of the bands, the setup time gets a little bit, you know. Yeah. It's good to have yeah. alternatives. You know, something just uh, flipped through my mind, and you know, I read all these grants, and you're going to be happy with this, Ben. So I'm not nagging at you, <laughs> but I read all these grants every year, and I thought one of the most interesting grant uh, was they put a um, like a stage out in a water body. And then I was thinking, I wonder if we could do that with our little lake thing. And then that's where the performance was, and everybody sat all around the water body. I thought that grant was amazing. Mm -hmm. And this was from Florida Car uh, Arts and Culture. And, um, it, you know, it was just a really interesting use and then everybody sat around the whole bowl of the open land you know i'm just i know it's it's thorny i mean it's hard but i just thought of that and i thought that when when i saw that grant i thought that is so cool and surely there has to be somewhere here in dunedin you always talk about the water yeah. and our water influence, that we could use something like that idea. Okay. If you have the information on it. I... I'll, I'll, call the, the, I'll, I'll call the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. Ms. Stepper, can I make a comment about that? Mm -hmm. So um, when I lived in Europe, when I lived in Bregenz, Austria, we had an international event each year, and it was on the water. The <coughs> stage was then built on the water. The water. And we all sat around in the, in the Bowdoin Sea, um, which is Austria, Switzerland, and, and Germany, right at the tip there. But it was was really well appreciated, and it was always on the mm -hmm. stage was it's built on the water. water. Very, very interesting. Very interesting, and and fascinating. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Anything else? I have a I have a sure. I have two questions, Vince. If you would if you would please. Well, if you'd make a quick comment, you said you talked about uh, a particular uh, sport. Could you talk about the other sport in relationship to that sport, tennis? Yeah. Just make a comment, if you would, please. And then, and then the second one is, what what was the cost of rebuilding or redoing or refurbishing the the rotary stage? I'll just call it the rotary stage effect. We had a rendering for that stage. And when we put it out to bid, the bids came in over 300,000. We had 150 budgeted. Um, well, actually, we had 110 budgeted, I think, and the um, Rotary was committing to put in 30,000. So we, we had 140,000 to do the project. It was a beautiful design by a Rot Rotarian who did the design work gratis, and um, uh, it, it was, you know, twice the, twice the amount that was came in twice the amount. That Did we get, I know one particular organization, I know who they are, that came back with a, with a number like it was $310,000 or some number like that? That was the, uh, Rot the Rotary Club. That was um, uh, Andrew Pullius from the he, Rotarian. He did the design. No, I mean, a, a company came back and gave some input about how much it would cost to put to build that. Was that about three hundred and ten thousand dollars or something? It was somewhere? over three hundred. Over three hundred, and that. But did we ever go? Did we ever go out to bid for that? Yes. That. So that was yeah, that response. Came in three and a quarter, something okay. around that. That amount. Thank you. If you make a comment about the about tennis as well, then it would be great. Yeah, I, I mentioned yesterday that I did um, go out and I visited with the group that was coming here um, to talk about tennis, and uh, there is some, you know, there is some some maintenance that needs to be done on the courts. You know, all courts are going to show um, cracks. Uh, the last time we did, uh, these are aren't that significant, but the last time we did the Eagle Scout uh, cracks or the Eagle Scout resurfacing. Um, we do nylon strips. We we try to we try to minimize the cracking, and then we, we paint the courts, and then we line the courts, and that was done in 2019. Um, and we have money in our budget right now to do the courts at Highlander tennis courts. 
we actually have met with our, our uh, tennis um, maintenance group that does this type of work. And it, it, we are going to move forward with it because we do have the money. But again, it's a, we're not going to see any action there for a couple of months because how busy busy they are. We also have um, uh, money in for for the tennis courts, uh, for the Fisher courts in 23. So those those courts were due to be next. So it was Eagle Scout, then then Highlander, and then and then Fisher. Thank you. And we also have a basketball. Met, we also, also have a met with the, you. Also met with some of the folks on uh, site. On site that that have had a went out about during the tennis. times that I knew that they were going to be out there. Um, there were about ten tennis players. They had two courts. They were playing doubles, so that was eight people. And then the other two tennis players would just jump in at the same time. The pickleball court were going on on the other two courts on the other side on court one. And the, and the tennis players were using court two and three out of the three courts. And it was just great to see that they were all on the courts together and everybody was playing, everybody was getting great exercise. Thank you. So, and we do have one other court resurfacing project in here that we, it says 10% of the Elizabeth Skinner Jackson basketball court. That's gonna be a, a total res, um, um, renovation. We're actually stripping it down uh, and, and re resurfacing, complete resurfacing. And we have a purchase order in the system right now to get that work done. But it's just like everything else, and you've heard this over and over again, trying to get people out there to do the work and, and to um, commit to a time frame has been, you know, has been tough. Vince, um, it says the pickleball, the pickleball courts are planned for fiscal year 23. They're actually, it's going to be 22, right? Well, because of the ARPA funds, we, I believe we, we're not following a specific fiscal year like Penny or General Fund. Okay. But it's not going to be. It's going to be sooner than 23. Well, as soon as we can get the the word and on on the geotechnical and the drainage, we can start moving forward with getting uh, d doing a design build. Oh, oh, as well as going to the community, we have to make sure we get to the community. So that's actually really a good point that you bring up, Commissioner, because uh, w the business plan itself. Again, this is the first quarter. So the first quarter, it was fiscal year 2023. Yeah, gotcha. So we need to fold ARPA into this business plan, which we will. We haven't had a chance to. Obviously, that's a huge project. But but and then we'll 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 designate what's like going to be ARPA. Going on. Yeah, yeah we're just hanging out. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll 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 designate uh, what's ARPA and okay. and the yeah, fiscal great. year that we're we're going to do it in. So that's that's I should have mentioned that when I did my introduction. Okay. I know some more communicating with the tennis players and pickleball mm -hmm. ball players mm -hmm. on all these things, so, okay. And, and Vince, I mean, I just laugh when people say, oh, Rec and Parks Director, that's such a fun job. Uh, <laughs> it's a hard job, you have a hard job. Thank you for being on top of stuff. Can, can I just tag on real quickly, and Vince, and I do thank you for going out and actually talking to mm -hmm. the people that are using pickleball and tennis, and again, you know, a lot of things almost do involve a crystal ball, but with growth, what is probably the primary number of tennis courts and pickleball courts we're actually going to need? I mean, can we come up with some number? Uh, well, we are, as I mentioned, we are doing, and we're just about done with it. We want to keep it out there for a month, a month, six weeks. Jocelyn Broadhead and Recreation Division is working on that, and we're looking seven days a week, all different times, mm -hmm. um, so we have something in real time what the numbers are, but according to the NRPA standards, uh, city of our size, and it was drilled down when we did our strategic plan uh, to more to Dunedin uh, with observations as well as surveys, and um, the number of courts, tennis courts in a city of our size is nine. We have 11. I know we have an instructor, a very popular tennis instructor. He, he rec also recognizes, as a business person too, that he went and got certified in in instructing pickleball as well, because he needed to make sure that um, his business plan for his business, because of the amount of people playing play in pickleball. So I don't have a number, I don't think NRPA has a number, because pickleball has just really started so to new. explode, mm -hmm. um, but tennis does have a number, and for our city of our size, it's nine courts, we have 11. And I know the, the tennis players will say, well, but there's lines on the pickleball, the lines on the tennis courts now. So we'll have six additional, um, pickleball courts, I'm going to move very slowly once they're built on whether or not we keep the lines on the existing tennis courts 
or we take those lines off those tennis courts. Good idea. Yeah, and it's going to be slow. I mean, you know, I think we all have the best intentions of wanting just to solve issues quickly and moving on, except we have such a big issue with the pool. It's like we keep adding, we can't possibly, you know, so we just have to, something's got to give as we figured out yesterday. So I still want you to build pickleball courts at Sterling, but do I want pickle, more pickleball courts or do I want to get the pool that I feel like we need to get? The pool that's been going on for 20 years now. Done. Okay. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I love that. That's it on this goal. Okay, thank you so much. I have nothing to say about decorative furniture. Not much <laughs> progress on that one. I don't either. Yeah. Mayor, I think that what we need to do with this <laughs> I mean, is you know how I feel about the damn decorator. I think that we need to fund the initiative. As, and then I think so, too. I don't think it's that expensive. I think it can transform a corridor. I, I've been saying it for five years. Right. And I we're think. already working on Patricia, as yeah, you Patricia, know. Yeah, so, Patricia. And right. I'm, I'm really looking forward to what you're going to be doing on Patricia. Mm -hmm. I think it just can be such a hot little area. I mean, I think it's just fun. Mm -hmm. It can be. Yep. I agree. I just think, you know, that for years. We're making yeah. a hot little area. It can be, it will be. So, so you're saying you're going to put money into it somehow? Yes. Okay, thank you. But you won't take it from the pool? Uh, hell no. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. I'm taking it from the CR right now. I'm just kidding. Bob. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah, Bob. Bob Don't get Bob place. started. Come on. <laughs> okay. Who's not here? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right, community. No, let's start on the library. Right, from let's, the library. Uh, let's do community <laughs> development, and then so we'll we take a quick break. It'll be ten thirty then. Be great. I think okay. it's time since we're getting giddy. Up yes. Here. Yeah. Yes. I had to go get caffeine just to keep looking at this. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, George Kenny. There's. You guys probably know more about these two projects than yeah, we do. Well. <laughs> so the city multimodal master plan was obviously approved. Um, so that is a completed business plan initiative. Uh, and in fact, we've taken a first step in implementation with the adoption of the Vision, the Vision Zero resolution. So congratulations on that. Um, the second, uh, at, second one I really want to talk about is the character zone overlay, which as you probably know, will be in front of the LPA this evening. Uh, and is scheduled to be with you all uh, before you for consideration in, in your two meetings in April. So um, we will obviously be complete one way or the other after, after April. <coughs> and that's all I have, if you have any questions. Questions? Huh. Uh, I, oh, Go ahead. Just one comment. I noticed, George, that you reached out to Charlotte Abington about Edgewater. You know, thank you for that. Sure, yeah, my pleasure. That's great. I, we're going to try. I know you're working on that, but you know, that's good to keep her involved and understand all her sure. side of it. Yeah. Charlotte was the first, one of the first residents I met when I was here. So. Oh, okay, cool. She's, yeah. been, she's been yeah. great. Yeah, that's she's a drive. great lady. Yeah, she really is. And she cares about that corridor. So. Yeah. Yes, she does. Did you have a question? Her scenic corridor. Her scenic no, corridor. This, yeah, this absolutely. No, um, well, this is, this is what you had put in first quarter, correct? Yes. So it may actually be a little bit more money, I think, by the time we end in April, because we did have to pay for some extra. Is that correct? That's correct. You, you're talking about the overlay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there may have been some extra in modeling or a yes. little bit. Of, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I did want to bring up the sign ordinance. I know that Nikki, on a different subject, has talked a little bit about the sign ordinance and that she sees that we need some change. And so if we're going to actually tackle it a little bit, it seems like we would maybe want to tackle this, our monument to, our pull to monument mm -hmm. sign at the same time. Mm -hmm. and it seems like that would be efficient. So obviously you guys go talk about it, but it just seems like She's mentioned a need to address our sign ordinance, so y'all talk about it. I, th I think we should put some money in there for it. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is. I, I, or As an incentive, you mean? Mm -hmm. No. What? What no, you well, I, to, do the, to do whatever, to create the proposal. Oh, okay. Not, not implementation, just cre okay. create what the proposal is. It's a, it may not cost money to do that. I don't know, but 
And I would just add, Mayor, if I could, I mean, to that, uh, you know, we're potentially looking at a new BPI request this year for a land development code update. So BPI? If, uh, business plan initiative, sorry. Gotcha. BPI. Ooh, gotcha. Uh, gotta get in these I codes. thought you said PP. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, so if... Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting slapstick over here. I'm telling you, I've right, gotten no I sleep in the last week. I think they need some more coffee. I think they do. Sorry. Certainly, depending on where the commission lands with... Yeah consideration on that these could be folded into that as well well and here because it you do have on here and i was going to ask you where it says state road 580 form base code oh never mind i misunderstood what that said never mind i understand what that is you know the scenic corridor it could be we can't get it n i know that okay. but so I, we should probably take that off well there's other ways to do what you're trying to do with another way to do it right there's always a way just <laughs> I mean, we can name okay. it ourselves what we want to call it. No. It just won't be advertised. I think you're in your state, own path now. You're state on your own head path. Right now. State and path. national. It just won't be no, a part of that. No, but there's other ways to do that rather than using a scenic. Yes. That tool. There is other tools. You there are other tools. You'll let us know what those are I'm at some point or another. When you have nothing to do. <laughs> well, Mayor, then um, in that case, I'd like to talk to, to George about what that would be called and what it yeah, would Yeah, and like. that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying. I, right. I, it's same with the sign thing. Right. I'm just bringing it up that Nikki has expressed mm -hmm. some changes that need to be made. So to me, it's like, why not do both on my mm -hmm. end? Mm -hmm. And I think she's trying to say, well, is there something else that exists? But I know going through Forward Pinellas, he's based, uh, for, uh, forward, uh, uh, Wit has said, it's just not, it's not, it's not worth the amount of effort is, is basically effort. what he said. And I, I know that that can get our little hairs on the back of our neck up, but. You mean the scenic or the? The scenic. Okay, gotcha. And that for the benefit that's derived there, he's like, it's just hoop after hoop after hoop. And. Yes. So I, this will change names when we decide what that is. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to roll it over if it's not. No, no, no. And that's terrible. why I think what we're both saying on our things, we're just bringing it up for you there all to I talk about because yes. this is an update on where we are. Mm -hmm. And what right. we're talking about is for 23 right. a, a, as discussion items. Okay. The, the, the nomenclature might be wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And she I said that twice today. And I keep thinking, am I ever going to use word. that in, in, in a sentence? Probably not. He always Just says the words nobody knows. knows. Um, but I thought the only thing with Polda Monument was at some point we were talking about, mm -hmm. you know, basically putting, hey, in 25 years, you need to be a monument. Right. You're off the ball. More like 10 years. I mean, like that's, well, 10, whatever. I'm right. just, that's what they did on yeah. Gulta Bay. We were going like, to mimic. That's really the only did. thing, right? And that's that decision point. Yes, but, it, but I think, yes. We were, and I think it was in multiple areas <laughs> mm -hmm. that we wanted to do it, not just 580, but 580 was sort of the main, mm -hmm. the main place. And they've already been doing, a number of them have already been doing it, but it's to get that transformation. So we were, um, if I may, Mayor, um, we were close to, to really putting the program together, and then the director left. And then right, and then our right. city attorney, right. and then blah, blah, blah. Plus, we're doing the 580 study, which, yes. you know, some of this will go along with it, but getting that work started and sort of maybe here's what we all agree to, whatever mm -hmm. that is, mm -hmm. and then so it can all be done at the same time kind of thing. We'll let George get through the overlay first. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, I know. Yes. I know, and I'm not, I, listen, I'm, <laughs> I, don't, an I don't think anybody is saying a complete overhaul mm -hmm. or anything like that. Right. I just think no, I gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else from anybody? All right, let's take that break. Good idea. Ooh. Oh, wow.
Jennifer has to play mother today. Keep us all in line. All right, we're Jennifer. back on economic development. Oh. Bob's back. Yeah. Okay, because we're on a different goal. That's right. We're yeah, on goal two. Uh, right, right. Okay. Uh, uh, Mayor and Commissioners Bob Ironsmith, we're on uh, Epic Goal Number Two, Economic Development. Which which goal is that again? Can you? Uh, we're going to talk about Epic. my little cheat sheets. Sense oh, of there place. it is. Isn't Wait it? a minute. Isn't it? Yeah. Go to. Create a visual sense of place. Gotcha. Ooh. Certainly. That's uh, really where the furniture should be, by the way. That's where our trivia contest should be next time on the <laughs> Epic Goals. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, certainly, the first item is the uh, Coca-Cola Adaptive Reuse. As I mentioned a little bit yesterday, uh, uh, Jennifer and I have met with Coca-Cola Local. We've talked to Coca-Cola in Atlanta, and we've also stayed uh, in with uh, the broker here in Tampa. But where we are today, we have some updated information. Of course, Coca-Cola is going to continue their operations to the late fall of this year. They have considerable equipment on that site, about $25 million is listed on the uh, Pinellas County tax rolls. From the point that they close, they'll probably take anywhere from six to eight months to sell that equipment, and the property would look to go on the market probably in the summer of next year. So we still have some time. We continue to field requests or inquiries from uh, developers, interested parties. We continue to create a list and a database for them and we continue to look at what ideas and options would present themselves with the reuse of that property. So be happy to answer any questions on that item, if, if you have, myself or City Manager Jennifer. Any questions <coughs> on any of these things here? No comments? Nope. Okay. Uh, um, the other item, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. That's all right. I, I was just going to say, and I don't know if you want to mention it here, but I, you know, I keep working to get us 30-minute service on that trolley, and at some point I just need some help. I need some pressure help so I don't know if we I don't want to make it a big thing I'm not trying to say it's a big thing but it would be nice if it's not just my goal of trying to achieve it but it's all of our goals as we communicate with them and just having a singular message it may not happen for a couple of years but you know because they're they're hurt but we need that I mean we, need we really need that to get the congestion and the control I mean as especially during season, even if it started out that way during season. But I just wanted to make mention of it. I'm not trying to make a, a big <clears throat> item here. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to staff, mayor, or your colleagues? Or all of us? All of us. Mm -hmm. And I, I really don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to create more work. I just want to make sure our messaging is the same and that it's, you know, that it's a stated goal we're trying to achieve, whatever that is. And, and PSDA and Forward Pinellas and the county are all talking about transportation funding. And I don't know if they're going to go out for a referendum in 2024 at this point. I think if they did and it passed, we could definitely get the 30-minute service. I just mm -hmm. want it to be a, you know what I'm saying? I'm not asking for anything this second. Stay topical, I, right? Yeah. Okay. Just a couple other items to note, the uh, Mies Materials property, this one we've been working with Baycare, of course the old post office there on, on Main Street. Uh, we currently have a structural integrity um, consultant on board, and we're looking to get that project started in the summer to create additional parking downtown, so we're very excited about that one. The last item is Skinner Boulevard. We continue to work with DOT. This is the complete streets from Alt-19 to, uh, to Bass with lane repurposing and the traffic circles and the multi-purpose uh, uh, multi lane, if you will, for bicycles and walkers connecting to the trail, kind of a spur item, if you will. That one continues to go under design, and we hope to get that construction started sometime in the 24 period. Be happy to answer any questions that you might have, but those are three main initiatives under Epic Goal number two for economic development. Anybody else? Um, the downtown alleyway, I see it's going to be the future year impact. I, I do understand, Bob, that you've got a lot yeah. on your plate at this time, but it's still there. It's there. A lot of that came down to financial. Yeah. You know, you're going to see with the CRA is uh, because of these uh, big cost measures, which is the property acquisition, uh, the Skinner Boulevard, mm -hmm. and, and a future parking garage. Uh, those items are a lot of debt service. So it really just came down to a budgeting mm -hmm. uh, type situation. But yeah, it's there in outlying years. Okay. And, and it, certainly any uh, property owner could look with, of course, a partnership with the city of taking mm -hmm. on some of those improvements that they would like to do. 
I just remember seeing yeah. that, how Toronto had worked that, and it was really, really neat. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Bob. Certainly. Vincent? Parks and Recreation goal number two. Uh, we'll start off with one that's completed. We have completed the mm. handrail replacement behind the Hell Center on the trail side. The railing there was all rusted out, and now it's all completed and looking looking great. And so we'll take that out of the business plan and put it in our complete, completed sheet when we do the business plan for fiscal year 2023. Um, the next one is Lights and Trees Master Plan. I knew you were going to bring that up. You go, Vince. <laughs> well, I know if I didn't, you would. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I got it marked. <laughs> so we did walk the site. Um, we did walk the site with Commissioner Freeney and also with our city manager and deputy city manager. Uh, after we walked all the streets looking at where a good lighting plan would, would work for us. Uh, as you know, we do have lights in the trees at Pioneer Park, and we do have lights in the trees on Edgewater Drive. And now um, one of the other initiatives which has been completed was we have the lights in the trees at Clear Sky. And in fact, um, uh, the, the manager at Clear Sky uh, asked me for the information about if he, if he could actually add um, four more trees Wonderful. in that location. Uh, so that could go right into our, our master plan. So we did hire Jonathan Toner, who's a landscape architect, and he's working on the uh, decorative lighting um, master plan. And I gotta say that um, I, I, I don't wanna talk too fast, but the, the lights in the trees at Pioneer Park are really holding up well. And I did notice that when we had the vigil um, a few weeks ago right. when they all went on at one time. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, the first time around, we put them up in the canopy, just thought how nice it would look all up in the canopy. This time we're actually just going up into the branches. I think it still has a really good impact, but I don't think the squirrels are, are eating them up like they, like they have been up in, the, up in the canopy. I have to say, I do still love the canopy, but, but we'll see what the master lighting shows. And I mean, it looks good. I mean, it does, and I appreciate all the hard work on it. And I, I get the squirrels are... And what uh, uh, Joe and Anna have done is really nice, too. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Very impactful. Um, and then the third one is the Sterling Park Driving Range Shade, shade Structure. Um, we issued a purchase order uh, to purchase the, the shade structure. It came in under budget. Uh, so we'll be installing that um, as soon as, again, we're hoping we can have that done by the summertime because that's when it's, when it's most needed. Right. But the contract has the, the purchase order and it's, it's ready to go. Just a matter of getting the, the out there to do it. That it? That's it for goal number two. Any comments or feedback? Okay, thank you. Public Works. That's a busy little department. He'll be up here for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Good morning, Mayor, Commissioners, Vice Mayor. Happy Tuesday. Yeah. So I will be up here, but probably more back and forth. This, this is more of our, our slower epic goal than uh, some of the other epic goals. So uh, with this one, i um, just going to talk about the street print. Um, once again, this is a little bit behind since, you know, we're almost, you know, finished with our, our second quarter. Um, we've actually got a number of uh, street prints that we want to do. We want to bring the ones up on uh, Edgewater after the DOT has finished their paving now uh, and, and get those street print done. Um, we're working with um, uh, the CRA and, and Bob and his group to, to redo the, the one in front of um, Deneen Brewery in addition to the, the second one we're going to be putting there by Jensen's. Um, and also as, as some information, I do not have the exact start date, but the Deneen Causeway is going to be resurfaced here coming up. Um, Pinellas County has made contact with us to let us know we met out on site. Uh, they were originally looking for last week. Why would they do that? I, the bridge is going to get replaced. I mean, why would they do all that now? It, because it, it's been 20 plus years and it's come up on their schedule to, to be redone. 
So there, there's lots. If you, if you drive it, there's a lot of potholes. No, I know. I know. But I think we've been holding off complaining about it because it's because we're hoping to get funding for a bridge. Uh, well, I'm assuming, too, even with that funding, that's still going to be years out. So I, they, they figure it's a, a, a good expense of their dollars. Anyway, we have uh, three different uh, crossings out there with the, the street print on it. Anyway, they're going to go ahead and pull that up, put the standard in, and then we're going to come back in and do the street prints on top of that. So um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we're going to be having nine street prints, and we want to make sure that then they're all consistent throughout the city. So. And, and oh, was that before the before the consideration for the intersection at at nineteen all nineteen? Yeah, that that picks up right just past that intersection, or maybe even just a little bit into it, because we were you know, they were talking about the um, the pressure points for the you know the vehicles in there, and if the the wires uh, embedded in the in the pavement, so they're pre pretty much picking up there, and then going all the way up to. Um, past Royal Stewart Arms and, and right up to the point where it switches over to the state of Florida and, and DEP at Honeymoon Island. What about the roundabout that they're trying to do? Um, the roundabout, I, I actually met... Um, that would all happen at the same time. No, um, I, I spoke with uh, the manager out there at, um, Honeymoon. at Honeymoon Island and um, they have no funding for it at this time. Um, When's the street? happening when's the don't know it's it's coming very soon they originally had it scheduled for spring break and and so we discussed it with them and then so that's been pushed out since then um it's like we do our annual resurfacing it's the same thing with the county except much larger and they're going to be all over the county doing their yeah. uh, resurfacing so can we'll, we can we maybe coordinate with um can we get wit in on this because it, if we're going to do a roundabout if there's gonna, if, if somebody's paying for it, whoever. Yeah, but that's the issue because he told me that when I talked to him. Yeah, about, you know that that there's no logical pot, even inferred. We might have to step up. Yeah, and um, I already told him that was not an okay, option. Okay, so right. I just so. But my point is, let's assume in the next 365 days we find a funding source. Why would we have them pay? Why would they pave now and not wait until we solve that issue? So it's all done at once. It is so congested out there that anything we can do to combine projects, it's like it's so congested. There's never a good time anymore. Everybody thinks spring break, but when you start the summer, it becomes equally as busy. So I know that they're like a machine that's hard to. They're going to do what they're going to do, but it just seems like we would want to try and solve the roundabout issue prior to them going out and, and causing more delay. And that's what we're trying to fix things so it won't be. Mayor, we can we can uh, reach out to them uh, having some history on, on how that machine works. Um, I suspect that the, the reason they're doing this now is because it's a resurfacing job. There's no geometric changes to the roadway. It's probably primarily driven by the fact that if they don't, they're going to start having base failure in the other portions of the roadway. I suspect the roundabout, the two schemes that I've, I've seen that, that were provided uh, require some, some design at the end there, obviously, to accommodate the roundabout. So um, my thought would be, or I'm assuming their, their thought process is whenever that happens, then that end of, of the causeway will be addressed with a design and, and the paving associated with that. Obviously, that's another impact to, to the area, but I'm assuming that that's their thought process. Let's get this done so that we can protect the, the base going forward and we'll address the roundabout at some future date. But, uh, yes. I get we, it. We can, we can reach out to them, but I suspect they're probably not going to want to delay Yeah, because <laughs> we've yeah. been trying to get them all to be coordinated on all of these things, and it, it's just not happening, so, you know, it needs to be. Okay. Um, the only other thing I just yeah. want to mention that was mentioned before with uh, Nicole is, is the jaywalk is now uh, underway. So um, we've got the Arts and Culture Committee together, and, and they're doing their thing. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what's coming out, that's going to be coming out of that. So um, and then with that, if we're just skipping down, we've got some exterior painting um, uh, coming up. So uh, and we've got Keith here if you want any specifics with that. And um, as you know, too, we've already gone out with our pavement management program for fiscal 22. So we're, we're out uh, doing roads uh, at this point in time. So questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Anybody? Nope. 
Um, when, when did the exterior facilities part uh, painting are going to happen? I mean, just do you know when? Uh, it said early to 2022, so I'm just curious. Good morning. Uh, Keith Fogarty, Public Services Division Director. Uh, actually, the 22 projects, I just met with the contractor last week. He was supposed, or two weeks ago, he was supposed to get me a schedule uh, for the Fine Arts Center, uh, Martin Luther King Fire Station 61. I have not heard back from him yet, uh, expecting the question this morning, especially for the Arts Center. Uh, I did send an email last night. I still have not heard back yet. Okay. So. I was just I was just sort of wondering about that. Well, well two are scheduled now for 2023. There, yes, there's, I think, three projects Real, total. Um, public services. But then, yeah, there's quite a few in the existing. Okay. okay. Thank you. Let us know when you know. And I did have one more question, but now I have to go back to Paul. Okay. Um, thank you, Keith. Uh, on, on the... Street prints, when you say Edgewater, Weaver, Causeway, that means that they're, they're all going to be uh, designed so, so that it, it creates a, a continuous um, visual of how they're done, correct? So you're going to Edgewater, you're going to do Edgewater, so you would do Orangewood, mm -hmm. Florida, Albert. Then you're going to go down to right by the marina, right? Are you going to do that one? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, good morning, Vice Mayor. Um, as far as uh, Orangewood and, and um, uh, Florida, those two, as you recall, uh, were designed and permitted with the DOT with what's called the ladder design. You, you see the, the pavement markings that actually, if you look at it from an aerial, it looks like an, um, a ladder. Those were permitted with the DOT to include the street print. So as soon as we can get that contract out, we can go back and, mm -hmm. and do that under the previous permit. The ones across from the Fenway at Albert, as you work your way north on Edgewater, mm -hmm. those have to go back and get permitted because they were not originally designed for street print. Um, we have a pretty good re relationship with Ron Chin and his staff, so we should be able to get that permit um, processed and approved to, to include those as well. Um, as you work your way around the bend at the marina, those are actually inset uh, mm -hmm, bricks. Mm -hmm. uh, those, the DOT did not impact those when they did their resurfacing, so currently there are no plans to redo those right now. Um, and then as you work your way around on Broadway and head north, if you recall, when we did Wilson, that already has Wilson, a street print uh -huh, in it. Uh -huh. So as we, as we work our way throughout the city, we'll go back and, and do those ladder design, um, uh, MUTCD approved crosswalks and then do the street print. That's, that's what we're going to do um, out on the causeway as well. And, and then so, it goes to, to the causeway. Correct. There's one at um, Michigan. Is that, maybe that's, maybe that's just a, I think that's, yeah, just, just, that's a, it's just, just the, the a standard, um, standard crossing. It's not yeah. the real flashlight. Mm -mm. No, no, it doesn't. Yeah, that, that's a crossing with, um, with the traffic light there and the trail. And so then you go on to the causeway. Right, and, and where we have three of those. So and, and once again, this will then, you know, make everything consistent throughout and the city. That, that's what exactly I was looking for, consistent design. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Jennifer? I'm not sure exactly what this one is in relation to the next one for Parks and Recreation, which is the Clearwater Ferry Service Contribution. Well, this is Sorry. the dock. Yeah, the dock itself. I think it's a capital. Sure the lead. That, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's problematic, know. right? If anything, that's on hold, will we? <laughs> yeah, and mm -hmm. I would tell you that at this point, when we originally put this in here, mm -hmm. The, the ferries were intended to be much larger. Much larger, right. And we need That's a not the case item. now. They're going to go with something more comparable to what they currently have, which is so, a little bit of a larger version of a pontoon boat kind of thing, or like the Cal ADC, that kind of thing. What I'd like to do then, Mayor, is delete this until we know that for sure. I mean, we it's not funded. It's a future year impact. I don't want to delete it, and I'll tell you why, because mm -hmm. they're trying to get everybody to put mentions of this so that they can prove 
that right. they have city, different city support? But we have it um, in the next slide under Clearwater Ferry contribution, service contribution for $49,927. So that's what they had wanted to see, right? Right, because right. one's operating one's capital basis. Right. So we're not just the capital component, which is the one under city manager's office, we're to enlarge that dock is now off the table. For now. For now. But then we have a business plan initiative here that, that means essentially nothing. And I don't want that. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. I, mm. I just don't want us to lose sight that eventually, I mean, part of this deal, if, if it all goes down, yeah. is that each city will agree to make the improvements as they enlarge the ferry. Right, and I think that's part of the marina master plan. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you, so, Mayor. <clears throat> off it goes. Off? Okay. So just for clarification, the it's 55000 now. In the first quarter, it was it's 55000 of for Clearwater Ferry of ARPA money. Uh, this shows 49. I think that's what the number was. Mm -hmm. And for, for that's basically assisting with the operations. And I'm going to say we probably um, we probably won't spend any of that this year. I think it's the start of the service now is being projected for 2023, and it may be more than this. Yeah. yeah. Given right no, now, right now, because no negotiated funding has happened right now. I think the cost of the operation part of it it's 450 thousand a year for Clearwater and Dunedin. And then there, and we're trying to get the county involved in that because it's county tourism, you know. So there'll be decisions to have to be made. I, with the deal is not negotiated. I'm just trying to be transparent as to where we are. But obviously, we're the smaller entity of all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the um, the other project for me on this list is the pram shed replacement. Um, and we had the design complete um, and bid out, and it came. The bids came back in in January, um, and the bids came in over twice as much as what was what was budgeted. We are building a 1,500 square foot shed, and um, it has a sink and it has electric, breakaway walls, and the bids came in over $800,000 for Ooh. 1,500 square foot. So we did, we did have cost estimates two years ago. It was 300, then we upped it to 350. Um, and then more recently, we have, right before we put it out to bid, we got a cost estimate and it was uh, over 800,000. And when we had put it out to bid, um, that's the number that came in. So we are going back um, in next year's budget to um, make the adjustment and rebid it. And we only received one bid. Wow. That's huge. That's crazy. No question. Um, with the pram, what's being, what's being held up because the pram shed's not replaced? Everything's still, everything's still the same type of classes? Yes, every, everything is still operating. So summer sailing is happening? And right. Well, there's I been a lot, of, a lot of repairs. The, the exterior walls are starting to fall apart. We've had to patch them. It's over 50 years old. But, class, but youth classes during the summer are still happening? Because I thought those were delayed until this got replaced, too. No, well, we're still running our... Doing our, all yeah. the same stuff? Okay. All right. We actually yeah. delayed the Prampton to accommodate the... Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right. Wow, that's a lot Working with them, they wanted it delayed. So the windlasses are operating, okay. the youth okay. sailing's operating, and our summer camp. And everybody out there is aware of, of what's happening? So they don't, they don't start yelling at us why it isn't it done? No, we need to, we need to communicate that with first yeah, of all. We need, we need to. Them. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and a clarification: our we held up the summer camp because we thought we were going to build, so we're not we we don't have it advertised for um, selling camp. This yeah, because I checked last year for summer camp and it was held up. Right. But now it's held up again. Yeah, that's uh, that's my only thing. It's kind of you know, but I mean that's huge, huge increase. Mm -hmm. It just worries me because, you know, again, it's, it's great to have that availability for kids here in Florida, but 
And there was a, si a similar uh, building built at Edgewater Arms. I believe they housed their bicycles in the building right off of Edgewater Drive. And I was working with um, Joey D on it. And you know, we, we cost out the square footage and we did a similar square footage. Uh, the architect that worked on the project gave us the number. But more recently, we felt we should you know, look at with all the construction updates and inflation and uh, es you know, escalation costs. So we, we, we knew it was coming in high, but we still went, went ahead. We had everything ready to go to bid. And now we have a, a better number for uh, our budget for next year. Okay. Are we okay? Thank you, Vince. Not really okay, but what, no, we, what can we do, no. right? <laughs> you know, so, that's uh, important. Is it uh, the supply and demand? Well, I mean, why is yeah? Well, construction is just crazy. well. I think it's it's all of those things, and it's really a harbinger of what's to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's one of your yeah. words. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Public Works, again. Scary. It is scary. Good morning again. You'll see that the, the first two on the, the list has to do with the Dunedin Causeway and the undergrounding and um, pedestrian safety. Obviously, we're waiting until we have final bridge plans and we're moving forward with that, so that's going to be a future year impact. Uh, would like to update you on the Brady Box culvert. Um, that's something that has been sticking around for a long, long time. Yep. Um, I, I promise you it's coming, uh, hopefully sometime soon. We've actually done, um, we've hired DMRP to um, look at that. Um, we, we had a plan and we moved forward with that. We, but that required, um, because of everything we have to do there with the creek and the head walls and everything else, uh, it required um, some easements to be provided <coughs> by the neighbors um, to the south. Um, they refused. So we had to go back to the drawing board and, and come back again. So uh, we, that's where we're at with the standpoint. We're still waiting for, for those drawings to come back. We're also looking then to improve the access off of Indian Creek for emergency access back where we have that, uh, the bollards and the chain to go through. You know, we've opened that up to let golf carts and things go through there, and we have the signs for you know, no motorcycles and things like that. For the most part, people have been pretty good. So that's been nice, but um, we want to improve that access then you know, for emergency vehicles or you know, in case we do get overtop, but we're going to you know, be prepared since we're not going to be able to do what we would have liked to have done. Um, and then just going back to, to yeah. costing and pricing, you know, I think at one point in time we were three or four hundred thousand dollars. Now we're up to uh, uh, eight hundred thousand dollars on that. So you're going to see a very large price tag um, okay. for that work when we come in. Um, the other one, the uh, Cedarwood and, and uh, Lynnhurst, we talked about that just uh, a commission meeting or two ago because we came forth with uh, uh, the contract to, to move forward with that. So um, that's underway. And, and everything else is, is things that are pretty much in, in the works. Um, you know, nothing specific there. We're um, getting survey for uh, a number of those streets west of uh, Alt 19 and Bayshore there. And we're moving forward with our um, storm water uh, pipelining as well. Okay, any questions for Paul? Thank you. Okay. Jennifer. Yes, you, I think you know the status of the dream, and yeah. you're going to be adopting that resolution uh, this upcoming Thursday. And there's been plenty of really good work done on the uh, electrical distribution power grid assessment in, uh, as a prelude to our our franchise agreement coming before the city commission. And I know Commissioner Franey has been working with Jorge Quintas, and they reported out along with Duke. So a lot of really, really good, good, good work done there. Ready for 100 then is actually um, it's folded into the to the uh, dream. It, it's highlighted within the dream the pathway to ready for 100 as well. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Okay. Thank you. George. Commissioner George Kinney. Um, we only have one item in this uh, in this epic goal. It's the Solar Energy Initiative Grant, which is an ongoing uh, business plan initiative. 
um, through the first quarter of this year. Uh, we had a, of the $50,000 allotment, uh, more than about 43,000 has already been distributed over 19 properties. Wow. Um, so it goes very, obviously this program is very um, uh, well sought out and, and it, the money goes very quickly once, once, once it opens up for, for these applications. It's, it's very, a, very good. A way to consider adding more for next year? I think we should. Quick. I think we should. <clears throat> Well, I'd like to maybe monitor it this year because yeah. I know well, I know that the state just did away with net metering. So we, well, mm. yeah, I don't know if the governor signed it yet, but yeah, so I that might have a negative impact yeah. on. Mm. Sure. Okay. Sadly. Public works. Back again. Oh, It'll be part of it. So we've got a number of uh, things up there um, with parking lot resurfacing, HVAC replacements, roof replacements. Um, I'm not going to touch on any of those specifically if, if, unless you have any questions. Um, fleet replacements. Um, we're, so we're working through our fleet replacements for next year. Scott Caterson is our new uh, fleet uh, superintendent. So he is. You're uh, kidding. No. He went from accounting to fleet. He did. He actually wow. he actually was a manager at uh, a Ford dealership <clears throat> before he he decided to, to use the I don't know is it the left side or the right side of the brain to, yeah. to do the accounting. That's so, interesting. Yeah. So he that's, he, that's, that's an it, it's an interesting leap. Yeah. Yeah. So I went to school uh, with him. You know. Oh, that's right. That's that's very true. So uh, yeah. So Scott's over there. So he's just getting settled in. So. Nice. Uh, as, 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 as he progresses along and, you know, right now he's learning the people and the procedures. We're going to be obviously looking at, at, at what needs to be replaced and what can be put off. We had that discussion a little bit yesterday. Um, with that, and, and you know, I, I was kind of quiet during, during that part of the discussion, and as Jorge mentioned too, that, you know, city con or city, state contract that we're able to order the vehicles off, you know, that, that, that's a really good deal, and they're kind of behind, so we're thankful for that, right? So, you know, we can order some of those vehicles now. You know, where we're really seeing the cost increases is in our emergency um, <clears throat> uh, vehicles and also our garbage trucks. Because they're all special order parts kind of They're thing. special order. Um, you know, we're seeing 20% year over year increases in that. So, you know, that's one of the things that I'm going to work with Scott on too is trying to figure out how we can go through on a year by year basis and try to true up some of these numbers as we're moving forward. So when it comes time for those replacements, we're, you know, we're not $200,000, $300,000 in the hole because we haven't saved enough money, you know, for those. Um, and, and then, too, as you know, we were here earlier with uh, Bill Pickram to, to purchase those um, three trucks. So, and actually, I want to say, I can give you a little bit of an update on that. It may only be two trucks um, because the, the, the trucks start off with a chassis from somebody, whether it's, you know, um, Kenworth or Mac or, or whoever. Um, and, and who we were going through had already gone through their allotment. We were going with Kenworth their allotment of Kenworth. So we were trying to source uh, another chassis from a different dealer to, to get that so that we can build that garbage truck. So, um, you know, th this is, you know, it's scary. I will say, you know, I spent a lot of time in fleet um, since the, the previous superintendent left. And, and I can't tell you uh, how much work our mechanics do on those garbage trucks. I mean, it's day in, day out. It's amazing, you know, what we, and I think it, it is kind of a take for granted thing. You put the stuff in the bag and put it in your can, and then guys come through and, and take it away. But, you know, that stuff just eats when it all gets mushed together and uh, the yeah, liquids yeah, yeah. and the things yeah. and that. Yeah, I, I'm trying it's to give no you a good visual, garbage. It's right? something else. But it, it ends up being, you know, pretty much a, a fairly aggressive liquid. We get, a, a, you know, there's a, a lot of rust, a lot of corrosion through that, and, and they're, they're rebuilding panels within the truck, the, the push arms and the compactors inside the truck. They're having to do stuff on the outside of the truck too because of the corrosion. Yeah. And you know, we're, we are literally getting every ounce of life out of that, but it's because of those mechanics that, that we have in solid waste, or in, in, in uh, fleet that do such a great job on those solid waste trucks. Awesome. Well, you thank them for us. Yeah, that's, that's really important to hear. Mm -hmm. Anything else? 
Yeah, let me uh, do a couple more things if you don't mind. It's sure. we kind of got a long list here. So um, I, I don't know if you heard, but the, the Curlew Reclaim tank is being repainted and we're going to do some artwork up there. Yeah. So we're, we're very excited about that. Uh, already working with um, Nicole and uh, Elizabeth um, for, you know, having some sort of grand opening. I don't know if it'll be a ribbon cutting. I'm not exactly sure what you do with a, uh, an elevated storage tank, but we're going to do something and we're going to make a big splash with uh, uh, Sylvia and Henry. You know what so. would be really cool is to take a drone and yeah. just fly it around, yeah. you know. Can, can the drone pick us up and fly us around? <laughs> if you want, <laughs> Vice Mayor, if you want, we can get you certified and you can climb up to the top of it if uh, you no, like. No, thank you. Uh, With my cane. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's yes, that's, that's it. it. I think I'm going to need a crane to get up there. <laughs> Sheriff has a helicopter. Oh, yeah. Um, cool things that we've got, well, I think there are cool things going on, is List Station 20 and List Station 32 repair replacement. Once again, those are, are both uh, FEMA mitigation dollars. So... Design's done, we are literally just waiting on FEMA. So as soon as we can get that money in the door, we're gonna pull the trigger on those two. But you know, uh, they're between 60 and 75% uh, um, grants, so obviously money that we don't have to pay back. So we're, we're really excited to get those two lift stations uh, replaced. And lastly, the Lofty oh, Pine Estate. Oh, would you just mention where those two stations are? Okay, so uh, lift station 20 is over off of Solon. And if you can picture Solon between Belcher and CR1, you know it kind of goes down into a valley. Well, at the bottom of that valley is our lift station number 20. So it's, it's, it's old and undersized. Um, the other uh, lift station is 32, which is over in the Greenbrier area. And for those of you that don't remember, that wasn't initially part of our sewer system. We, we took that over from a, a private company um, with uh, Pinellas County kind of being the intermediary there. And so with that comes, and, and that was 35 or more years ago now. So um, you know, it's just time for, for those things to be updated and replaced. So, um, and that the lift station 32 kind of ties in with the Lofty Pines septic to sewer project because uh, that, um, as, as we do that project and bring those different uh, households onto sewer, then that lift station will be the one that will be handling them as well. Um, and then I just want to put out a reminder, it's been a while since we, we've talked about it. We will you know, need to come back, design is finished, we're out getting permits now. Um, we're working with the county on the funding so we can reduce the, the cost uh, per property owner. And, and one of the big things, and, and just to, as a reminder, we discussed this uh, before when we brought it to you, is that we'll be changing our ordinance to allow people not to annex in to the, to the city if they want those utilities. So, and, and that's a big sticking point with the county as well. Um, they, uh, they did the same type of thing in uh, the city of Clearwater and off of Allen's Creek. And, um, one of the, 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 the bugaboos with that was that the city could not require annexation. So we discussed that before. So I, I had some draft um, wording that uh, we went and w I went with with the previous uh, city attorney. I'll be hitting uh, Nikki up with that and, and see and maybe even doing something a little bit different. Um, yeah, I hate that. I really hate that. I know. But it's, if, if we want funding and, and want help with that, it's, you know, we've got to look at the, the, the greater good and the water quality out there and, and getting people off these septic tanks. So the, the thought is that we, you know, we sweeten the pot and the city provides more help than just what the county is going to provide and we're going to get people to want to voluntarily annex because of the incentives okay. that we want to provide. So I'm, I'm hopeful that most of them will. It, it'll be, come down to being a business decision for them. So, um, but the overall goal is for our environment and our water quality. Okay. Any other questions for Paul? Thank you. Rebecca? Um, the Dunedin Citizens Academy, actually, it was just discussed um, at the department head meeting um, the week before last. And I think this setting the dates for this one's going to be a little bit of a challenge due to um, everything going on at that particular time. We'll be moving. We'll be moving, and we'll have an election um, at that time, which the, obviously the city clerk's office is involved in, I and things. Postpone that. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's right now it's still a discussion point, but it may, um, because we will obviously want to do it with the new city hall being open mm -hmm. so yeah. we can showcase it and things. So, um, so that's something that's 
kind of um, still in the works and in discussions. So you may want to do it in the spring of 2023, maybe? Yeah, it, that may be a better um, fit. A fit. And, and give us time to work out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just get settled in the new building and be able to show it off um, and showcase it. Um, public records, Robert's Rules and Sunshine, we kind of touched on this just a little bit yesterday, but this is just an ongoing project that we try to um, keep up with all the boards and committees and also um, the other employees within the city. Um, we're constantly um, reaching out and having those discussions. Um, the semi-annual boards and committees chair uh, meeting, actually um, Jennifer and I just met on February 24th, I believe it was, um, for the previous one, and that was actually still a Zoom meeting, and we did invite the vice chairs at this one as well, which worked out really well, and we had a wonder, 41 people, wasn't that yeah. what we counted, I believe? I mean, we had a great attendance, and so, um, but that's another thing that we're going to, the next one will actually be, we actually discussed it in the new city hall. Um, so we'll kind of... They were really excited. Yes, exactly. That was kind of at the end of the meeting. And so that was a huge success. Um, and so that's all I have, but thank you. Any questions for Rebecca? Thank you. Communications. Oh, no, city manager. We already know what's happening with yeah. that. New city hall. Any questions for city manager and city hall? Okay. Thank you. Communications? You want me to go? All right, we'll go on to the next one real mm -hmm. quick. Community development, George. Thank you, commissioners. Two, two projects. Um, one, as you know, is uh, again an ongoing business plan initiative, and that is for the annual cost of the um, of our host compliance software that helps us with short-term rentals uh, and tracking those and, and trying to determine you know whether or not they're they're, they're authorized or not. Uh, the second part, if you recall, is a new one that we uh, the commission last year offered uh, a little bit of money for us to take a look at our short-term rental program in general and evaluate and um, kind of look at maybe retooling that program a bit. Um, as you know, we've had some issues with some staff. Uh, we lost two staff members, so we are in the middle of bringing on a supervisor now, and we fully intend to kind of hand this over to that person and start She'll to think. She'll be a rock star on this. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's I think that's exactly right, Mayor. So uh, you'll see a zero percent there, but we do anticipate using yeah. that money for yeah. the end of the year. Any questions for George? Um, I was just going to ask. I, I did. It was the way you worded it: short-term vacation rental program evaluation and support well I, so, I totally get evaluation I, I wasn't sure why there was really two pieces to it if you recall last year we kind of talked about it and we said the first thing we need to do is kind of look at the existing program and see if there's any kinks or any uh -huh, process uh -huh. adjustments we could make so that's kind of the evaluation part of it uh -huh. and then the support was really um, looking at potentially some outside help and actually in, 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 from an enforcement perspective and actually bringing somebody in um, you know I think with the economy the way it is, we're having some difficulty doing that, and we really anticipate that our new supervisor will actually come in pretty strong on this and probably bring somebody in very quickly to, as that second support staff to, to kind of handle that part okay, of it. Okay, so it was sort of support staff, actually. Yeah, yes. That or any programs or whatever she determines right. exactly. that's needed. Okay, thank you. Any questions for George? Okay. Well, Jump back to communications. <laughs> hey, I'm working on State of the City, so. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, um, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commission members. So a couple of items on here under communications. Um, number one is the uh, marketing um, dollars that we budgeted um, $10,000 out of the communications budget and $10,000 out of the CRA. And this was to support the business community and our marketing efforts with um, the chamber, the DDMA, Visit Deneen, which was uh, started under the Business Recovery Task Force that has now transitioned into the Alliance, which is actually under another transition, which is really going into a very good direction under Visit Dunedin. So we are all working together. This money has not been spent, and we're looking at a way to 
um, to actually allocate or appropriate that, doll, the, that money into the organization under Visit Dunedin. So we're working with finance right now in how to best do that. And because we have projects that are underway, including the mobile app that is almost finished. And so we just want to find a way to appropriate that money that we can get that and um, into the organizational structure so that we can move forward with that money. And then of course, we have the ARPA money, which is separate and it is not part of this um, this budget. And then, I don't know, um, Bob, with the 10,000, was that the 10,000 that you're, you're allocating the, for CRA for some of the signage and wayfinding? Yeah, it was the Yes, so Bob is using that other 10 um, in uh, ways to uh, actually uh, facilitate downtown marketing, wayfinding, signage as well. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions on that? No. Nope. Okay. Questions? Thank you. Nope. Um, the next item is the website. So we are getting very close to signing a contract and doing a, actually a five-year contract with a vendor that is Open Cities. And Open Cities is now part of Granicus, so it actually makes it a little easier because we have a lot of Granicus products already in place. But what we've been doing over the past few months is we've been vetting vendors, and we've spent a lot of time vetting vendors. We've vetted four different companies, all really well respected, all who do great work. Um, and we've included departments across the city because we wanted this to be an inclusive process. And we wanted everyone to feel good about not only what the product looks like on the, you know, to the, uh, the outside world, but also how the back end um, functions. So we are getting very close to signing that contract and then there will be a lot of pieces and parts to that that will be part of the 23 budget and the 24, 25, and 26. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm very excited about that. <clears throat> we are too. Um, and then the uh, last item is Zen City, and we already purchased that, which is why that's 100% um, funded, and we'll be um, adding that to the 23 budget, but we've already seen so much value out of, out, of, out of the Zen City platform, and they keep adding functions for us, like surveys. So we did a survey for Bob just recently, which I'm working on that report, um, on the Deneen market, just to get you know feedback quick when... Uh, two two question survey and uh, but the sentiment, I I hope you get to mm -hmm. that little snapshot I send you every week or most weeks, mm -hmm. give you an idea that no matter what we hear out there, you know that sounds so negative. Overall, our sentiment day in and day out is either very neutral or very positive. The positive always outweighs um, the negative. But we can also track those projects, which has been very valuable. And, you know, for example, the overlay district, we've been, we've been tracking that project. Um, we've tracked others as well. So, Very good. Okay. Any questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll go back to the state of the city. All right. Robert. Bob Irons with Economic Development. Just want to go back in time a little bit, too. Uh, we're actually meeting with Pfeiffer Towing tomorrow. So uh, Dennis has oh, been good. good to work with. I just got a, a text from uh, uh, Trevor. So I just okay. wanted to mention that. Uh, that was relative to making some improvements with uh, the I know fence. the folks on San Christopher is going to yeah. be really happy. They make the facade improvements yeah. there. Uh, Epic Goal 5 for Economic Development, uh, the, the, the high-profile item there is the affordable housing. We uh, continue to work uh, with the uh, property owner. Uh, the one developer we were working with has d decided to pass on it, so we're actually working with another developer. Uh, we have a meeting later this week, and we want to see uh, what their thoughts are relative to trying to uh, uh, do something there on Union Street. If you recall, we made that application last year. That was for the apartments. Uh, that we did not make it through the state program, and we're looking to see how we can do a better positioning with this project, perhaps with the state and the county and we're looking to make sure that the county somehow uh, partners with us, with us on that one. Um, Coca-Cola, as I mentioned earlier, we continue to work with that. We continue to want to make sure that we keep some funds available to do any technical analysis that we might need with any type of uh, preliminary conceptual plans or things of that nature. Um, and of course, with Coca-Cola, we're waiting for uh, Department of Environmental Protection with the DEP status, and I've been talking quite a bit with uh, Paul Sanek, uh, Public Works Director to stay up to date with that. And once we can kind of get some finding on that, it'll open up what 
can be done with the property and it could be several months before we really get uh, um, uh, feedback on that but Paul has been staying on top of that so I appreciate it happy to field any call any questions you might have uh, for economic development I think we're good thank you very much thank you keep up the hard work thank you Teresa I'm working on state of the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as this is over, we will be too. <laughs> Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commission. Uh, Teresa Smalling, Director of HR and Risk Management. Uh, just want to touch base on the customer service program. It does show as zero, but that's only because uh, it's a reset. So we completed 95% of the training before uh, we had COVID. And what we're looking at now is doing refreshers for our current employees and uh, a more intensive uh, training for our newer employees. At orientation, they do get uh, they do get the customer service standards. We go over all of them, but we want to give them the same benefit that all of our other employees have gotten. And I know some of you attended that training, so you you understand how it goes. Any questions on that? No, I, just, I actually had that in the back of my head as to, you know, when we're, when were we going to start over? So mm -hmm. happy to see it. Yep. Yes, we, we ha are working through some staffing, um, and we're still working on getting our our uh, f uh, other person in. So as soon as we get that, hopefully we can get started on some training again. And then the Unite the Need an Initiative. Uh, we are still working on trying to get the citizen committee off the ground. I know we had that discussion yesterday. Uh, the task force, the employee task force, uh, we are working on the in-service day that we're expecting to have in June. And uh, I've sort of uh, named it celebrating diversity, our diversity, uh, with pending approval by the task force. Any it questions? Be, it might be good to not create another citizen advisory committee and maybe make it like you, you've got your key internal people, but also have folks that were included in the inclusion committee before as a task force. But I also don't want to add to the chaos that we're trying to get rid of either. So. Thank you. The, the task force will be meeting next week, so we will definitely, I'll put that on the agenda for discussion. And I think it may make things a little easier because it has been a challenge trying to, yeah. you know, logistically, you know, get that together, uh, you know. So I think that would be good to, on an ne as-needed basis. Yeah. You know, as long as we're addressing mm -hmm. why we wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Michael. Oh my gosh, he's got a long list. Uh -huh. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Michael Nagy, Director of IT Services. Um, one of the goals I want to talk about is the dedicated fiber cabling for the new city hall. It's hundred thousand um, dollars. This funding was requested for a new fiber cable that will be installed from public services to the new city hall. Since this cabling is one leg of our broadband infrastructure, internet infrastructure, we're proposing the funding um, that we're proposing, the funding for the broadband is out of ARPA funding. So we'd like to, at a later date, uh, transfer this $100,000 um, that won't be needed for this dedicated fiber uh, to network equipment purchases for the new city hall, parks operation facility, the EOC, um, as we found since last year's quoting, prices on uh, network equipment has drastically increased. Um, it's just like globally with cars, with everything. and cars, they don't chips. So, so we'd like to reserve this money to be able to purchase the equipment later on. Um, the next is the fiber cable audit and survey. This is our fifth year requesting this project. It hasn't been funded. Um, the funding will allow us to contract with a third party vendor to perform a physical inspection of our existing fiber cable infrastructure. We really need this survey so that we can determine our present conditions and if repairs are forthcoming. 
And the next item is the new City Hall fiber connectivity for $50,000. This funding is requested to connect the existing fiber cabling that was pulled out of the old technical services building so we can reconnect into the new City Hall building. And this is, needs to be done before we can move people into the building. Uh, we also quick. are- Quick. I'm sorry? Quick. Hmm. Yes. You'll have to be quick. Yes, quick, yes. Well, if we move it, if IT could get into the building in mid-July as proposed, yeah. that's when we're scheduling to have this connectivity. Okay. So it's really a temporary solution um, for this connectivity as we're requesting in FY23 a new dedicated fiber line into the new city hall using ARPA funding. Any questions? Nope, can't wait to see the downtown Wi-Fi in next year's budget, or soon. Can't wait. That's going to be really exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Vincent. Epic goal number five, I just have uh, one initiative, and that's uh, the Dunedin Pride event. Um, in the general fund for 22, um, we put 15,000 uh, to help with the event, support the event, logistics of the event, and um, some, some of the entertainment as well. You've been working with Mo on that, Mo and Greg and all of them? Yes, actually Jory, and Jory's yeah, been yeah. going to the, the committees. And um, so what I've learned so far about the event, uh, the event will take place June 11th through 18th. Um, June 11th will be the kickoff with, uh, uh, at, a, at a baseball game at the Blue Jays um, at T TD Ballpark. Uh, June 18th will be a gala at the Fenway. So there's a lot of different pieces yeah. to this. They're also looking or considering a golf cart parade, 5K run, and possibly a movie in the park. Um, but they will not be requesting this year uh, a street closure for, for a par parade. So um, we'll be assisting with uh, actually Dan with might the, help you with that race, you know. She yes, loves jewelry. Yeah, she yes. absolutely loves jewelry. She'll do anything for jewelry. Yes, you know, I know, and I know if they've, they have talked. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's what the 15000 will help pay for this year. Thanks. It's exciting that yep. we're getting this off the ground mm -hmm. and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And again, this is one of those things we talked about two or three years ago and because of various considerations, we had to put it off. So it's <coughs> nice it's going to happen this year. Okay. Thank That's you. Yet another goal, Jennifer. Yes. The uh, city manager's leadership scholarship and this one, I think that I want to I want to work with um, Teresa and Les and Ashley to, to to rename it. But what we ha we've set aside funding, and that funding is good to be dedicated to uh, the conversations that I've had with Teresa are, are to our mid level management and support for our mid level management supervisor skills, that type of a thing, um, as well as our as our department uh, directors retreat. And as a, as I uh, as I told you yesterday at the re at the uh, at the our retreat, I'm looking to um, convene the, the uh, department directors and talk about wellness and talk about stress and you know those types of things and provide what support that we can for them and maybe laugh a little too because everybody needs that so okay thank you thank you chief parks Good morning mayor vice mayor commissioners jeff parks fire chief i have four uh, items on the uh, the number six goal. And the first one being our fire training center. We had a training tower burn building. This was originally on our uh, goals back in 2016 and it was somehow removed uh, because there was no funding. I uh, asked to have it reinstated so that we kept it in sight. So, you know, we want to be able to see and remember that we, we still want that, that burn tower. Since that time, we've done a couple of state uh, appropriation request which we've been vetoed by the governor and we've also been trying to work with the county they're uh, as they're doing a uh, survey now of the training centers in the county to see what they can do so we're, we're hopeful that we can get some county money with that as well uh, the grow your captains consultant we have um, a consultant we've used uh, the past two years we haven't used them this year yet uh, to come in and talk to the crews he gets to, to know the crews and kind of give them a no-nonsense, uh, this is the way the department should be going. Uh, it's, it's been helpful, uh, but as I say, we haven't used it so far this year. Our SCBA air pack replacement, as you know, we have our FEMA Fire Act grant. 
uh, which we received for $222,000. So the department's share of, or the city's share of that, the cost of the 370 is approximately 150,000. Uh, we are beginning to get our parts in for that. So hopefully by the end of April, we'll have our complete uh, set and we'll be able to do the training and get everybody in, in service with that. So, and that should have a 15 <coughs> year life, Thank you. 15 year lifespan on that. And our final thing is the target solutions uh, scheduling <coughs> program. We are prior to this, we were on a, uh, the county system, uh, which was antiquated and we found so many other uses that we can do with this. If there's someone over overtime needed, we're able to, to put out a single call or single page to the whole, whole department, uh, instead of trying to call somebody and, you know, going through the, the call list, trying to get somebody in. So this has been very helpful. Uh, we're hoping to integrate it eventually with our uh, executime system. So right now we're entering two data into two different programs. Hopefully that will we'll mirror across shortly as well. So any questions? Questions for Chief? Thank you. Thank you. Waited all morning for that, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Teresa? <laughs> Hello again, Teresa Smalling. Uh, we talked about the class and comp study. Uh, we actually have a meeting today with the selection committee and, and purchasing to go over the proposal. So we are optimistic that we should be able to bring this back before the commission uh, by next month and, and get started with the, the org study. Uh, just a plug for the wellness program. We are actually having a wellness workshop for all our uh, employees on April 14th. Uh, we are gonna be covering the financial, physical, and mental. I think the flyer went out yesterday. So uh, there are two sessions to try to capture everyone. So we hope to see all, uh, as much of our, our employees as possible there. Any questions? Doesn't look like it. Thank you so much, Teresa. Welcome back, Michael. Michael Nagy, Director of IT Services. So the FY22 computer replacements, we've actually, uh, the last commission meeting, commission approved the purchase. We purchased them. That We are waiting their arrival within this week and next week. So that'll be 100% complete. And the Tyler ERP on-site training, that's the uh, funding comes from two sources, IT services and building services. We're going to um, uh, put this on hold until FY23. We want to finish the Entergov utility building and work order installations before we provide. And uh, online permitting, I hope? Continuing training, yes. That's the Entergov, yes. That's the Entergov is the online permitting. So once we complete those modules this year, then next year we can start doing uh, continuing yeah. education training. Any questions for Michael? Thank you. Thank you. So, oh my God, look at all the work you guys are doing. Uh, do you sleep at all? I mean, that's a lot of stuff to get an update on. You know, it really is. It's yeah. it's incredible. We're like the little engine that could. Uh. But you can't keep operating that way forever, you know? It's, it's great that we all step in and go above and beyond, but it's, it's not sustainable. So I think we look forward to hearing from all of you and how we can make it more sustainable. So thank you very thank much. You. We appreciate it. Okay. Uh, any overall questions? Can we move on to the next item? We're good? Okay. Uh, so now we have um, informational items. Okay. Commission discussion. I didn't get any emails yesterday, so I'm assuming we don't have any commission discussion items. I, I had I had one, but I'm going to pass and I'll send an email next time. Okay. For the next meeting that we have. Okay. Thank you. For the sake of we have a missing person. Right. Uh, any Fair updates, enough. Rebecca? Jennifer, did you have any other things you wanted to report on? Mayor, we just had the city manager's update, which is attached to the agenda. That's that 160 pages in yeah. there. Um, and besides that, I have nothing. You know what? Um, George just left, didn't he? Never mind. No, no, no. No, no. Don't do uh, 
I'd just like to know the progress on the condos that are, or townhomes are being built at New York and 580, as well as the entertainment place at Skinner and Old 19. Mm -hmm. oh, They're just moving really slow, mm -hmm. and I just want to know, especially that one, especially the one on Old 19 at Skinner. Sure, sure. We'll provide you uh, with the, the status via, set, via email. If that's yeah, that's okay, fine. Because we did need to double check, but I do know that they both projects have active building permits and uh, we can't dictate the speed in which they build, obviously. But, um, but yeah, it's been very, very slow. It is, and, and it's I think just, it's, 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 it becomes sort of a blight. Right, again though, it's, it's a supply chain issue. I get it, yeah, so. I do, and I'm not. Right. Um, but it's just, it just. We, we can ask Jorge since. <laughs> just, just a quick comment, if I may. Sure. I, I, I appreciate the comment for this one down here, just because that has it's ugly, yeah, it's really and it's weird. right center stage yeah. as you're coming off a of Skinner. And then up here, though, the good news is, is I'm really watching that one, and that's yeah, it's, that's, it's, yeah, it's going. It's progressing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Co constantly and 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 beginning to look good. Right. Okay. Um, any other questions for the city manager? Okay. Uh, Nikki, anything? Um, no, I didn't have anything for this morning. Okay, uh, commission comments. Start with you, Vice Mayor. Anything from your liaison positions you want to share? Um, coming up in April is the garden party. I know that Trashy Treasures was amazing. They made like forty six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That was just pure work. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Gail Gamble and and her crew should really be thanked. Um, there is a meeting tonight with the historic, um, the Dunedin History Museum. Uh, I can't attend because we have the LPA. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, we'll be, there's several things, other things tonight. Right. So I think that's about it. Anything from your liaison no, position? No, no, just I guess from the school perspective, but it's also a Scottish thing. I don't know you just to acknowledge that Highland Games yep. coming up. Absolutely, it's coming up. It's coming up. That's exciting. Yeah. Anything from your liaison? Um, I think I think basically everyone's just kind of waiting to see about ARPA, ARPA, and what's going to be happening. So I'll, I'll leave it at just at that. Yeah, and I think you got an update from Forward Pinellas that went on for a very long time. So I don't think there's anything for me to fill in. Um, Mayor's Council is just focusing on getting a new leadership group since elections have now occurred. Um, Nothing really to share there. That's it, I think. Highland Games, but you mentioned it. So that Highland Games is coming up. It's yeah, the 2nd of April, and, and next weekend. And having Not this person, coming, but the next one. And maybe having a person come, coming from Scotland, mm -hmm. the arts mm -hmm. person. Yeah, Pr so the Prayed on Friday night, woo. Yep. Wow. That's what I'm told. I haven't seen the total schedule yet, but... Um, Yep, Friday night's the parade and Saturday's the Highland Games. So, And uh, our our guest, we will mm -hmm. be... The Friday night is going to be a little crazy, I understand, because she's going to be judging a... Yeah, there's an art opening thing, but, and it's scheduled for the same time as the parade. Uh, Isn't that the DFAC? Yeah. 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 So, not good, because we've been telling everybody that we want, you know, we want, we're all in both of them. And I don't know how we're going to deal with that, but Nicole's working on it. I'm sure she'll figure it out. Um, but, yeah, there will be different events during the course of the following week, and I, I do believe some of it's in our calendar, but it might be a good idea to give us just a quick email to tell us what's expected out of us for... And, I, 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 Mayor, I don't know. I mean, it's not in the parade. Isn't It's not on my calendar. It's not on your calendars, I don't think. I You know... I will reach out to those organizations, and but I don't know what. No, I don't need. You, I don't think you. Uh, I think it's just being worked on by Jory and. Yeah, Jory sent out an internal email yesterday. Oh, she did. Okay, I didn't see it. Yeah, and, I, and we weren't included on it, so. Yeah, and Andrea has been out, so you know. Yeah, I don't know much about the march except that it's supposed to be big. The catering. Uh, no, the, the pipe the, band march yeah, yeah, Friday yeah, yeah. night. The rolling parade. Yeah, yeah. They call it a rolling yeah. parade. It lasts about 30 minutes or whatever. Like 15 bands that are playing. Wow. And it's probably my fault. Oh, not your fault. Well, I'm the liaison. I should be pushing that information out. 
She did send some information it's just to busy. populate, yeah. but not all of it yet. Yeah. They did ask yes, this, a little bit ago. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. We're going to try to figure it out. What? <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that for the for the March Friday night, uh, the honored clan is um, McPherson clan, and that's my clan. And so they did ask me to march nice. with them as opposed to a golf, golf cart and everything, just to let okay. everybody know. Cool, all right. Good for you. He's switching. Well, see, clans. he knows he's he knows more than I do. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just been it's a yeah. Busy, yeah. It's just been a busy year. Yeah. I, I can't keep up with everything. Um, okay, I think that's it. Anything else good for the order? We're done. You almost got my finger. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been busy. Thank you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.